days counted all the ways I died Everything I couldn't save Buried down, still half alive It's got me crawling in my skin But no one's coming out to hold me close Pouring out the gasoline Yeah, I've been making friends with all these girls And I got nothing left to lose Fight to the future Greetings, summoners, uh, or if you're not league players, greetings, humans. Um, yeah, we got a banger of a game here. I'm joined by my uh, long-time pal, my partner in crime, Mr. Savage Mikis, and we've got uh, Gucci Yang up against Greasy Goblins here. Yeah, uh, actually, going in, this, like, this was the one of the matchups that I uh, anticipated the most, because... Uh, we're playing against, uh, the Gucci is, is playing against uh, their ex-jungler, Panini. Uh, and uh, the, I think Panini even uh, tried out for Gucci to try to make it to one of these teams. But uh, he was unsuccessful, unsuccessful in doing that. But he made himself a very strong squad uh, as well. And he might prove that uh, Gucci made a mistake in, uh, in that preseason uh, to not select him as the jungler. He might prove indeed. And uh, I think... what. I wanted to have a little segment to talk about Panini. Last split, he was being talked about as the bottom end in terms of jungle performances throughout the split. But this time around, this split, it's a completely different story. He's gone and done his work. He's improved a ton and he's come back and he's looking like actually one of those top players that uh, it, that we have in his role here. So a big redemption arc and uh, it's kind of like one of those... Um, you know when Darth Vader defeated uh, Luke Skywalker for the first <laughs> time, and then in the in the final movie, Luke Skywalker comes back and uh, finally defeats his father. This uh, we could see a similar situation here. Uh, he... <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we just might uh, the Panini Skywalker uh, might get his uh, redemption here, but uh, I think it's gonna be. He's going to need the help from his whole team to take down Gucci, as one player cannot do it. And uh, yeah, we've seen Panini sometimes struggle in higher pressure games. Then again, he has played quite well in uh, these SLE games so far. So yeah, a, a lot of focus on him and uh, the focus on the jungle matchup in general, actually. Yeah, jungle matchup. Now, um, I mean, just for context uh, and those who uh, didn't watch the Gucci tryouts that we hosted, um, it was Revilo up against Panini actually for this spot, and and before the Greasy Goblins were formed, it was a, you know Panini was actually a uh, uh, supportive second hand jungler that we had available in in case that Revilo uh, you know was was busy or didn't have time. So this is where it's like 
you know almost like you know you've chosen your man for the jungle position i've gone and made my own team and this is going to be my chance to to match up and uh, show you why you've made a mistake uh and i think just off that both junglers actually not just panini but both junglers will be uh, feeling a lot of pressure for that yeah, and the great matchups all over the map, actually. Uh, Gucci, always known for their midliners, and Rebreed has been looking quite well. Coming off a uh, team of the week selection, uh, will match up against uh, Barak Oganda, was his name, I think. Barak Oganda, and, yeah. Yeah, who is, I think, as well, one of the best midliners in SLE. And uh, coming off of such great two Nautilus games, uh, uh, he might... My th it's very interesting to see how these two midlanders will match up because they are uh, on upswing as uh, some of the best we have here. Yeah, exactly. And um, Gucci Yang at the start of the split, they were struggling to find their footing. And um, the first two games, I mean, even though their scoreline is two and two, uh, I think the way they lost uh, or the way they dropped their games was more disheartening than than actually just like a, a flat out loss where it was like. They were just ahead, three or five k gold or more, and then they go barren, and then out of nowhere they just make a weird call, throw the game, uh, and then they lose. And I think it's it's almost like y you know the saying of like you'd rather just get stomped than a defeat like that because it just makes it it just feels worse and it's just like mm -hmm. it looks yep. it looks worse because it's like everyone's like you should have won those games and like, how, how have you lost that? Um, but this time around, you know, they, they've ramped up. Last game, they played against... Um, who did they play against? Not Black Manta. Uh, they're uh, playing ah, against Project Imperia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they played against Project Imperia, and uh, they put in a much better performance. Uh, I think game two was quite dominant. But uh, this time around, I think they've come up against Ragnarok. They've come up against, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned... Um, <laughs> Project Imperia, uh, and then the week before they played against Silver Phoenix. This time yeah. around, this is the first top team that Yang will have to play against, and it will be a good test for them to uh, to see how they do. Good test indeed, but on the other side, the Greasy Goblins have been kind of jumping up and down. They started the tournament off so strong, taking down the champions Vitagen squad, and uh, uh, then they matched up against uh, another top tier team right now uh, in the Blazing Pandas, where they conceded a 2 0 loss. And after that, uh, just last week, uh, they played against uh, Enlan uh, Esports, where they took uh, another 2 0 victory. So, no no ties for them so far. They either, either go for a home run or uh, they maybe uh, throw an airball. But uh, let's see how, how they, can they do this week. Yeah. Uh, and I think. Greasy Goblins. Um, one player in particular I want to highlight for for one of, for their success. Uh, actually, not just one player, two players. Their solo laners, Barack Ogama and Cybers Kirk. I think um, from what I've seen in show matches, uh, Cybers Kirk. I was so so before the split started, uh, and I hadn't watched anything. I thought Cybers Kirk was going to enter the league and just be completely dominant. Uh, and then mm -hmm. during the show matches, he. You know, outside of the quantify game, he didn't look good at all. Uh, he was getting solo killed by, I think, uh, both Ruzu and uh, who's the other team they played against? Um, whoever, whoever else they played against. Uh, okay. And I think the concern there for me was like, oh, maybe like these are two of their best players, and you know, if they're not performing, then what does this team look like? But split starts. First game in, they are up against Vitagen, the, the monster of the SLE. And Cybers Kirk is performing super, super well. Barack Ogama in mid lane. And I think Barack Ogama potentially could have um, along the same lines as a, a rising star mid laner uh, story in the SLE this split. Yeah, uh, I highlighted uh, him as well. And uh, the matchup, yeah, as as far as hype of the, the jungler jungle matchup is, uh, it's the mid lane matchup only really looking forward to uh, rebreed. Uh, yeah, coming off of the all SLE uh, team of the league selection, and uh, yeah, you you you're making the uh, Barak uh, on side of uh, Greasy Goblins the star player for them, and I absolutely agree. This guy is a great player, and uh, from what I've heard, this is not actually hundred percent confirmed, uh, but. Uh, all of these guys, I think, except for Panini, are uh, 
used to be very highly rated players back in season two and season three, like near challenger. They played with Alex Itch and players like that. So, uh, yeah, quite a quite a stacked roster here, and uh, they are definitely one of the under not underdogs, but dark horses to take it all in SLE. So far, yeah, up up and down. I think this will be a key matchup for them. If they can down take down Gucci Yang here, uh, then uh, they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but if they will drop the ball again here, then uh, I think it's it, it starts to create a narrative that if they go two zero one week, they will go zero two other another week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely so. And actually, one thing you mentioned there—the mid lane matchup here, Ruby and Barack Obama. I do do want to touch on that. I know I've been talking a lot about individual players, but I'm going to touch on on this uh, particular matchup we have in the mid lane because I think it's a, quite an interesting story. Barack Obama, uh, you know, we all know the story of the Greasy Goblins. They're they're ex high yellow players, and they've come in to you know they they've gone and played different games. They've come back to League of Legends just to compete in the SLE. Um, and uh, he's coming up against Rebreath, who 17 year, years old. He is uh, developing very, very quickly. I think at the start of the split was, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, so I started roster um, uh, with this lineup, but the, the one question mark was was mid lane, right? One question mark was, you know, who is this Rebreath guy? What does he play? Is his champion big enough? I think the first few games, he showed mixed performances, but that last series uh, on the Nautilus, um, not only showing versatility, but consistency and uh, being able to pick what uh, is needed for the team. Uh, not not trying to play that main character syndrome, you know, um, that uh, many mid laners that potentially play as you always do. <clears throat> um, so I think this is a really interesting matchup for me. I think for, for Greasy Goblins, um, I'm really excited, uh, particularly for this mid lane matchup, because you've got experience against youth. Uh, you've got um, someone who's like, you know, take it. You, you know, when uh, the army recruits like the old veteran, he's like, fine, I'll do it. It's like that. And uh, <laughs> what was Gucci Yang have like recruited uh, that young kid from that basketball court in a random street somewhere, and, and they're going to compete against each other. So, yeah, very excited for that. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm I'm also uh, looking forward for these drafts because uh, Gucci last season, last uh, guys these games uh, uh, were kind of a little bit uh, unique with their draft approach uh, with those Nautilus sex selections. And I'm I don't even is Nautilus actually that popular of a pick, or is it just like uh, turning out to be Gucci's signature pick? I don't. Know. So you know, I, I don't want to. I mean, first of all, I don't know too much. Oh, I don't know that much information. Um, I try to mm -hmm. stay as far away as possible from what uh, Captain and NAs are preparing for the teams. But um, I think the way I saw it was uh, sort of like you have firepower from from Ruzu. You've got playmaking capabilities from Flay today. You've got Kanza, who is a hyper carry in, in bot lane. And you've got Revealer, who's this, uh, you know, Ricky jungler with um, spicy picks and, you know, Things like the Lily uh, last last series, like not not many SLE junglers touched that champion except for Shaco One Tricks, of course. But um, a <laughs> uh, little joke. I hope someone gets that reference. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and so you know he's come in. He's come into this team, and he's looked at it. And I'm sure Captain has looked at it and gone like, "Listen, the role for you here is unorthodox, but if you can make it work." it's going to ensure that the team performs at a higher level. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's what that things like the Nautilus have done. And that's not, that's not saying, you know, we're going to see rebreathe permanently on tanks, right? But I think the point is, is adding that layer of versatility. I think a lot of criticism um, that has been thrown towards this Yang team is that they are very one dimensional, but with this new added layer, they stray away from that uh, one dimensional play style. And we see already uh, the Bard uh, being uh, banned. Flay today used to be known as a big champion player. Then he became kind of an enchanted player, but now he is just a playmaker in general with a very, very wide champion pool. And this Bard has become one of his favorite picks uh, these days. Yeah, exactly. And I think Bard recently just got a buff in the new patch. Um, one of the strongest champions uh, in the meta right now. And uh, I think the double-edged sword with Bard is that it is difficult to play. And I mean, 
we, we've all seen our uh, our solo queue bards just like for whatever reason buy lich bane rapid fire cannon and then go two and fifteen um but sadly for from goblins and fortunately for yang flay is not one of those bard players he's very very capable on it and uh off the back of last series i'm just looking at what recent goblins have done uh, the bard and the lilia they are really taking their notes they've done their preparation and uh, those two will be banned away Let's see, and it is the Ivan, so the Nautilus being up for picks, and uh, I know that uh, God of Hacks, I believe, is the, or is the Snacks, is the support for DC Goblins, and uh, that's uh, that's another champion that uh, he plays a lot, the Nautilus, uh, so we'll see if Gucci actually takes it away on their own side, but yeah, we also see the Yon being banned, I, I believe that's Barack Ogama's uh, best champion, and... Uh, no, we see the jungler being targeted. Some teams went with the approach to ban out all of Panini's champions in the jungle, but uh, uh, we see Gucci here not taking that approach. And there we go, Greasy Goblins taking away the Nautilus. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think Panini's champion pool is so unique. It's uh, He's probably, you know, in terms of mechanics, one of the best junglers in the league, if not the best. I actually, it's a bold uh, statement to make, but... Um, when it comes to micro play and mechanical play, probably is best up there. Um, so I think that that's why the target towards his champion pool makes sense. So uh, that's why a lot of teams do that. Uh, Yang have only uh, committed one ban towards Panini, and it, it will be the Maokai. Um, and uh, you know, I think Barakugama is uh, a big focus for Greasy Goblins. He's got a cha he's got that champion pool that follows the, the the same lines as like the Wowzer that we've seen in the past X ties or. Uh, I think if you compare him to, to leader in the uh, in in the LEC, um, so yeah, got to take away that Yon and it, it's some of those champions where it's like matchup doesn't matter. They will just smash, right? So Yon yeah. taken away, and uh, interestingly enough, Yang go for the Poppy Jarvan, which is uh, it's quite unique because you know um, the Poppy can be a flex pick, but it's uh, revealed with where that's going to go with the Jarvan pick following that. But Jarvan. And Pop, uh, so, so actually, Poppy is a counter to Jarvan, one of the champions yeah. you pick into Jarvan. So, when you pick them together, you secure one of the strongest counter picks into the champion that you want to pick. So, yeah, really nice. But that. also, in a way, uh, it's a counter to Nautilus in lane as well, because I think if Poppy has the double activated, uh, the Nautilus cannot hook onto her, uh, if I remember that uh, introduction correctly. And uh, yeah, it, actually interesting from Yang to select Jarvan this early because uh, maybe they didn't have another uh, higher prior pick. On the other side, Nocturne being selected by Panini, and that's one of his staple picks. Uh, I think you have played a lot of games with Panini with one, he goes of his champion. One of his staple picks indeed. Last split, actually, when, when things were looking rocky, the Nocturne was the champion that started turning things around before playoffs. Uh, and uh, it, you know he, he was looking good and he's got a lot of games on it. He's very comfortable on this champion. And there's something I have to say, Panini, when he's comfortable, is a very, very scary player to play against. So he's gonna go for that. Speaking of comfort, Kanza has got himself the silver, which he's uh, picked twice already this week. Yeah, I saw the Ezreal being hovered there. And uh, I was about to say the Gucci Ezreal coming in again, because uh, <laughs> all of the Gucci AD carry seems to be very, very comfortable on this champion, uh, bringing out mm -hmm. some great performances. But no, it's going to be the Sivir, a champion that is gaining a lot of popularity lately. So uh, yeah, the Kanza is going to be piloting this champion. I'm going to be interested to see which build will he actually be yeah. going, because he was the one to theory craft uh, that uh, the poke build on her uh, and uh, but I, I think in some games the the classic crit build is better so yes he he did cook up that spicy build for for the sewer and he has played it many times uh, we've seen those uh, in show matches and scrims um but actually uh last game when they played against uh project imperia he ran a storm razor sewer build which was yeah, yeah this guy's got a little kitchen of his own, so um, I don't know what he's going to run. So we'll, let's see. I, yeah, yeah. Tim Chef's typed in chat. It was Storm Razor Infinity Edge. So um, I don't know if he's going to do anything along those lines. But all I know is that when it comes to Sivir, this guy is a Michelin star chef. And uh, I can assume he will be cooking something up. Um, as uh, more bands come through and it's going to be the Nico targeted uh, against, uh, well, I guess, I mean, if the... If the poppy is going down into bot lane, that, that Nico ban is targeted towards Rebreath. Um, and the Tregath Shen against uh, Cybersco. 
a different approach from both sides. Uh, Gucci taking out top line champions, and the Ornis looks like to be banned as well, so my narrative goes to pieces. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no mid line bans almost, except for the Nico on the second phase. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm curious to see. I believe Gucci is going go with mid lane blind pick here, but uh, I'm still yet to see. Gucci intelligently taking out the Shen, denying that Nocturne Shen uh, uh, synergy. And uh, yeah, this Nocturne so far looks to be a solo diver uh, here on the side of uh, DC Goblin, so I believe they need to bring some buddies with him there. Yeah, solo diver, but uh, I mean, one thing I have to say about the Greasy Goblins, and we'll see how the rest of the draft plays out, but they currently have a Nautilus Nocturne who like to go in, who like to make an engage, um, and that's paired up with the Zai, and we've seen the games where Zai struggle the most is where the draft around her is just some full engage team comp. She is yeah. one of those AD carries that kites back. She she plays those fights where she likes to play front to back, she hits front line, um, she, she, she doesn't like running forward, um, because it literally counteracts the way the feathers work. Uh, and yeah, they, she does seem to be inside of a draft where you are going to look forward. And, you know, even with the Syndra, that is once again, an indication of like, let, let's, let's hit our spells and, and run at them kind of thing. And, um, <laughs> actually, I mean, I will say though, the Syndra pick into Lissandra is really good. That's like one of, uh, Syndra's best matchups. Yep. Uh, um, and I'm assuming, you know, as I said, talk, talking about reread earlier, Alessandra was a uh, pick, supportive pick, but uh, a Volibear here, which uh, is a bit spicy. I haven't seen this champion in a while. Yeah, the only player in SLE that, uh, the only top player in SLE that really picks his champion, I believe, is Case Maze uh, for Wacky Raids. That's one of his picks, but uh, <laughs> Jason Goblin is taking a page out of Wacky Raids' book, and uh, it's such a lane focused champion. It's so hard to beat in lane because the healing and the damage is just crazy coming out of this champion. And uh, if you want to deny a strategy that uh, plays Ooh. all around the top laner, that's a good pick to go with. And Gangplank on the other side of Gucci. Yeah, Gangplank. And actually, Gangplank has loads of setup for, for the barrels here. And with, with a Sivir, uh, rounds up a, a very high damage composition. The only thing I would say it lacks is uh, AP damage. Lissandra solo AP. Uh, it's common, but it's not usually the best. I mean, it kind of depends on what build Rebreath runs here. But um, yeah, I, I did want to say actually, Yang going for two top lane bans um, for me is not not that good in considering the opponents you're up against. Because the way I see it, Cybers Kirk is a very experimental top laner. He's got a deep champion pool. We've seen him play Singed, Tarek, this time the Volley Bear. It's kind of one of those things like, there's no point targeting a top laner who can play anything anyway, right? Why not just make sure you get a good matchup here? And and unfortunately for Rebreathe, he is playing Alessandra into Syndra. Uh, so it's going to be a tough lane for him to get out of. Um, and yeah, it, it, if you're Yang here, it's so important to not fall behind in, in, the, uh, in the early game. Because if, like, like I said, the Alessandra pick, it's really tough into Syndra. And... Mm -hmm. If the early game goes bad for the Lissandra, especially uh, even the Javan, then uh, this could be a very tricky game for Yang to play out. Um, as for the Greasy Goblins, I think the difficulty here is incorporating Zaya into this team composition. Because, as I said, you've got a an AD carry who likes to kite into a team comp that likes to go forward. So, yeah, I think both team comps have have its weaknesses, but they definitely have its strength. strengths. Yeah, that uh, that being said, the matchup, the matchup of this game, uh, we talked about the jungle, uh, we talked about the mid lane. I believe it it, it really is going to be more played out in the in the jungle because uh, if if uh, here uh, uh, Revilo can make things happen in the in the early game, uh, I think. Uh, they have what it, the Gucci they gets what they need exactly. They can they don't fall behind and uh, they can uh, go into these team fights quite well. But if he cannot do that, uh, once Nocturne turns level six, it might be a good game for Greasy Goblins. Yeah, it might be. It might be. And I, th I think the interesting thing is uh, there was a Nocturne picked into Yang already this uh, this split. And uh, what they did really well against the Nocturne was uh, kind of anticipating where Nocturne is going to ult. Revealer, from what I've seen, and the reason why I, I wanted to to make sure he gets a team here, uh, gets a spot on the team here, is um, his tracking of enemy junglers is incredible. It's uh, it's he, he always knows where they are. Uh, I think he's got a he, he you know 
he plays the game a lot himself and he's, he's got competitive experience from before outside of the SLE. So he knows the behaviors. Uh, he looks at a champion, he's like, what is this champion going to do? He's going to be here, he's going to be there. And last game against the Nocturne, he was, you know, I don't know if it was off the back of his cause, but Gucci Yang, they seem to be able to read the Nocturne ultimates. That being said, Panini, someone who I, I've already said mechanically, one of the most gifted junglers uh, that we have in the SLE, but also um, he, he is actually very creative as well. I think he does stray away from from the norm he does go uh, uh away from the, the conformity angle and he goes for unique plays that not many other junglers could usually think of so i think this uh, as we said this is such an interesting matchup to have and um i mean i think just an added bit of storyline is if these two teams have played show matches they've scrimmed a lot with each other they you know interacted in tryouts uh with each other as well not so much the rest of the team but panini and uh the rest of the gang um this is the first game they played so many times against each other but this is going to be the first time where high stakes are involved and this is where you see a a team break away from the other team of like we are that we are now you know guaranteed or, or you know we've made that statement we are a better team than you guys so this is a bit um well of course if this series goes one one then we can't say that right but um yeah it's really interesting to to watch how this plays out yeah, that's true, that's true, and uh, to be fair, I actually think this is going to be quite a slow game, because uh, it really feels like uh, both teams have so many tools to avoid the aggressiveness coming out of the other side, uh, and uh, yeah, there are champions that look uh, for later levels, there are champions that look for some uh, late game uh, on both sides, and uh, it's going to be a big focus from the Greasy Goblins to get the Volley Bear ahead. Meanwhile, uh, for Yang, it's going to be to make something happen with the, with the Jarvan on an early game, possibly in mid lane. But uh, yeah. it's not that easy. You kind of need to synchronize coming from different angles from with both Jarvan and Alessandra, right? Uh, so actually, getting onto the Syndra will be very, very easy, I think, in my opinion, for, uh, for the side of uh, Jarvan and Alessandra, because, you know, Immobile uh, uh, mid laner. Um, Syndra, the E cooldown early game is extremely long. And it's very unlikely that Jarvan and Lissandra will go from the same place. And as you said, yeah, coming from different angles is important. But as you can imagine, Rivers will be standing in the lane. Uh, Revealer will either come from River or behind or even mm -hmm. a wrapped camp. Uh, and if that is done, that Syndra stun will hit one, but it won't hit the other. And that Syndra stun isn't long enough to delay the layering of the CC. So let's say this is a level six situation. Syndra, will, uh, if Syndra gets ganked, she will always almost have to blow the flash. Um, and, you know, there's the argument, yes, she can play defensive in lane, but in this particular matchup as the Syndra, you definitely do not want to be playing defensive. You want to punish this early game pick because you outscale her and you are a lane bully. Uh, so you, you play oppressive lane to look to outscale. And uh, this Jargon Lissandra setup is counteracting that because you are on a mobile mage uh, yes you have a stun but that can only hit one one person if the you know angle is played incorrectly by uh by yang so um that is yeah great analysis there because this is uh this is an angle that yang definitely can pressure um more importantly if our play today starts getting involved uh, that will add even more uh, difficulty for the syndrome yeah, and if you look at the standings, this is both of these teams are currently four and two. Uh, both of them are contending for that uh, top uh, top eight uh, top eight selection, which will which will give you a side selection in playoffs. Of course, we're quite far from it, but top sixteen qualifies for SLE playoffs. I remember, I, I remind you, and uh, currently uh, uh, twenty one out of twenty two teams are still contending for it. Uh, sadly, Shadow Wizard uh, Money Gang did drop out. And uh, yeah, uh, and both of them are four and two, and uh, not so much of the standings uh, at this point in the tournament, but uh, I think a lot of bragging rights. Uh, both of these teams are very, very active in the, in the SLE chats and uh, in shit posting. So whoever takes this one is going to bring the memes, I believe. Exactly. There, there's a there's a lot of shit posting going on. I, I think, um, of course. To the untrained eye or to the naked eye, it's uh, 
very very like oh they're being a bit mean uh bully just just so that people know there's a lot of friendliness there's a lot of uh allied uh relationships between these two teams and these players so um yeah no no harm there it's all all nice and fun as i said these guys are good friends and we're all good friends uh we love panini we've been really grateful for his representation of Gucci in previous splits and uh i think um I'm really excited to uh, like it, it's one of those interesting things you always want to see friends compete against each other and it's always like at the end of the day yes there is a rivalry but at the end of the day you always shake hands you always have a laugh about it at the end of the day so I said at the end well I'm, I'm like a football player or something you could really say that. um but yeah it's a uh, really exciting stuff and and you know you mentioned standings speaking of the standings I think my opinion right this has been the closest SLE split we've ever had because SLE historically You've, you've had your top pack of pack teams and they just start dominating the rest of the league. This time around with the new Swiss format, we, we're seeing a much closer league. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's quite it's quite close indeed. I, I do think that some of the teams that are right now are on the top, uh, top of the standings might find themselves somewhere lower. Meanwhile, some of the teams that are um, maybe a little bit lower uh, might find themselves contending for the first place so far. And uh, yeah, but for me, the, the biggest surprise uh, has has been uh, has been the uh, rival Lynx squad, uh, the Estonians. So far, one of the strongest teams in SLE. Uh, Greasy Goblins also one of uh, surprises because I, I, at the beginning I thought that they could be very strong. Then at the preseason, I thought that they might be middle of the pack team. Right now, they look like one of the best teams in SLE. And uh, yeah, uh, very, very formidable op opponent for them here, uh, Gucci. And I think we are about to go in the game. Yes, I am very excited for this. And yeah, as you said, really, really hype stuff going on here. And uh, we are in game. Uh, Mikis, who, I, I want to know, who are you predicting to get first blood here? Um... Panini, known as a very, very aggressive jungler, even though he is on Nocturne, which typically farms a lot in the early game, I think he will surely be involved in the first blood, so it's either going to be on Panini or Panini is going to score it. Uh, that is Jungle Buddha. Uh, Panini is Jungle Buddha. <laughs> yeah, 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 Jungle Buddha. Um, I, I think everyone knows who, who Panini is. Like. Uh, j jungler for greasy goblins, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I think... It, it, from the side of Yang, they have this interesting thing here. Minions have spawned. Minions have spawned. Oh, you're oh, cutting wait. out, Adrian? Oh, I'm cutting out? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hear you now. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, when looking at the two high damage dealers on, on the Yang uh, team composition, they're not exactly early game champions. Hmm. How much did you? How much did you get? <laughs> they are not early game champions. Yeah, no. I was touching on how Yang is a team. Uh, they have a team composition here that want to get ahead in the early game, but um, their carries aren't early game champions. Uh, like the Sivir and the Gangplank need time to scale. Um, so, yeah, what's what's their angle to make sure that they are ahead in the early game? Yeah, it's, it's basically all on the jungler. It's on Revilo here uh, to to make uh, to get his uh, main damage threats ahead, right? Uh, but as we talked, it's it's difficult to set up Flay today here on the Poppy, more of a setup champion, and uh, we see already heavy trading in bot lane. Yeah, heavy trading in bot lane, and the the cool interaction here is Nautilus Hook is countered by the Poppy W, but it you know it's not like a a skillless counter it does require some reaction time not the fastest but real reaction time indeed and already Kichi yang you see you're building some good pressure and uh, that initial hook already blocked out and uh, you can imagine that will be uh, a really fun uh, skill check to uh, keep looking at yeah and it's, it's kind of like a half counter in a way i believe because uh the Nautilus still kind of lands a mini stun, I think, on the Poppy, but uh, he does not get the hook on to the champion. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be an interesting matchup there. And uh, if Flay today can it can make it happen, but uh, actually for me, the Poppy here doesn't even have that much value. Actually, in the draft, uh, um, DC Goblins <laughs> have made good adapt adaptions there. Seeing the Poppy coming in early, they didn't pick that many dash heavy champions, so. 
good good drafting by them i believe yeah well uh, actually interesting you say that i don't know if you know but volleyball q gets interrupted by a poppy dog oh does it yeah it actually does oh <laughs> little fun uh fun interaction like... that i know exists um yeah, actually it's like a mini dash i guess yeah. yeah 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 i got that off uh brox so um <laughs> shout outs shout out yeah. to two-time mr lead champion brox uh, i yeah. don't know where he has he has gone right now but, uh... Yeah. One of our, one of our favorites uh, to play with. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of our oh. favorites is that stun goes down onto God of Hacks, but it's just the trade for now. But you see there, play today, stunning up God of Hacks, and Kanza doesn't target the Nautilus, but actually takes that as an opening to hit that uh, Zaya there. So I think that might be the the angle to win these two v twos here. You make sure that Nautilus doesn't get that engage or doesn't ensure. Uh, that peel towards the Zaya happens, and uh, Kanza will be able to barrel down the uh, Zaya. Yeah, and uh, actually, I, I talked about the usefulness for uh, for the Poppy here, but right there we see Flay today feeling so so confident to go with it, and already first midline approach coming in from Gucci. That is the focus that we talked about uh, in the pregame. Yeah, midline approach, but I think. You know, that, that, that's the thing right there. Oh, I'm going to have to see what Jungle Buddha does here as uh, Flay today Ooh. has gone for Jungle Buddha, which means the Nautilus hook onto Kanza is free. The flash forward onto the AD carry of Gucci Yang follows through. And just as you said, aggressive as he is, Panini picks up fast blood against his old team. Yeah, Panini bringing the chaos in the early game, and that wasn't that chaotic. They did, they played the gank uh, very well, uh, focusing the AD carry, making uh, them lose so many summoners here. And we see, uh, yeah, instant replant on the, on uh, mid lane. Yeah, you can see uh, no vision coming in here. Panini also turning on the sweeper, and uh, yeah, there we go. Up top to the race is very really well played at the beginning by Flay today, but maybe a little bit late flash and uh, and uh, spell shield by uh, Kanze. That a uh, slight mistake will result in first blood for uh, Greasy Goblins. Yeah, first blood indeed, and that is massive for the Greasy Goblins. As I said, it's so important for this good Chi Yang team composition to get ahead in the early game, and that's going to be the first attempt to to go against that. But uh, yeah, as you said, Flay today at the start of that it did look good. You, you have to remember, it's so important that Flay today sneaks onto Kanza here to interrupt that Nautilus Q. That's where the poppy value has come. Um, and, uh, you know, as you said, outside of the, the you know, uh, quirky volley bear interrupt, that's mm. kind of the only dash that uh, can get interrupted here by the poppy. Um, yeah, true. So Panini um, executing jungle. that gank. Yeah, yeah as uh, Panini arrives in top lane, so gank in bot, mm. gank in top, and he is making a lot of plays in the early game, albeit I have noticed he is uh, very far down in farm. So um, uh, these plays definitely working well for his team, but uh, we'll see how that uh, develops later on as uh, Kanza and uh, God of Snacks will duke it out in a one v one. But um, yeah, with Panini making plays in top side and the information of him being there means that the first dragon will be started up by uh, Yang here, and I can assume that this will be secure for them. Yeah, uh, surely they will get this, and uh, lots of focus coming in here for Panini. Another top lane gank from him. Another top lane gank. This is going to be the Volley Bear ultimate exposed, and it's going to be no turret help as Volley Bear ult cancels out the turret damage, but there's going to be a jump onto Barako Gama, and the flash is down. Rebreathe flashes forward. A bit of a whiff in synergy, but that doesn't matter as the Unleashed Power is actually going to trade one for one. But crucially, kill goes over to Rebreathe, but kill over to Barako Gama. So early doors, Yang have faltered. Deaths in bot in top and a death in mid lane now. Yeah, lots of action coming in here, and we uh, we see the top lane. They they really really prepared for this gank a lot. Uh, the cyber in top lane stacking up the wave and using the volleyball ultimate. Yeah, no help from the turret, and there's just too much damage coming in uh, in that stage of the game. Gangplank does not have the damage yet, and uh, we see the gank coming in from Gucci also landing so much uh, here. But uh, there's lack of synergy here. Flay today pulls. Uh, Pulls the Barako Gamma out of the Jarvan ZQ. Unfortunate play by Gucci there, but uh, still a successful kill onto the mid lane. Yeah, still a successful kill. And uh, I mean, 
in the grand scheme of things, uh, this is probably better for Baraka Gama because, you know, at the end of the day, it was a one versus three. You are a Syndra into Lilisandra, so that play does go well for him. But his flash was expended, which means these next few moments, and you can already see Flay today on the mini map, these next few moments to see how Barack Gama handles this pressure now. Yeah, interesting approach. Actually, not necessarily interesting if we know the player. Panini going for lots of ganks with this Nocturne, uh, being a little bit behind in XP and CS uh, against uh, Revilo, but the two kills he has gotten does mean a lot so far, so... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll see if he can uh, get if he can use that five four four to five hundred gold lead uh, over his counterpart uh, to to make something happen after this. Yeah. And both of these kills critically, actually two out of three kills went for for the jungler. And oh, it does mean a lot, but what it does mean is that he is behind. He does have the Noxon ultimate available for this play, and actually Gucci Yang are gonna get collapsed on despite securing the Rift Herald. So once again, Yang get caught out, and the team play goes into the favor of the Greasy Goblins. They are now five kills to one, and it's looking so, so good for them. Yeah, the main task for Gucci was to not fall behind in the settling game, and already at a 2.5k gold lead for the, for the Greasy Goblins, just nine minutes into the game, we see Gucci just not respecting the collapse opportunity from Greasy Goblins. Four of their players are here, landing beautiful combo onto the onto the both the Gucci players. They do secure the Herald, but at what cost? Yeah, I've got to be really critical here of uh, Rebreathe and Flay. The fact that Barack Ogama and God of Hacks got there before them, oh, that that is uh, definitely uh, a crime, as uh, many people would describe as, uh, you know, if I remember correctly, the push was in favor of the Lissandra here. So, um, Syndra getting there to the objective first was um, uncommon, usually. Usually when you have prior, it means that you get to the objective first. But uh, I guess in this case, um, it was the, uh, the Syndra who got there first. And Barack Ogama, we said this was a key um, member when it came to this matchup here. And he's already one and one. He is up against his opponent and Rebreathe now under pressure in the mid lane. There's three people here. It was the Syndra that was said we said needed to be camped, but instead Rebreathe gets ganked by three. Six kills now on the board for Greasy Goblins and Yang. They are looking rough. They are so far behind in gold and the game are potentially slipping out of their hands. Greasy Goblins making successful play after successful play. Everything is going good from for them so far. And just like that, another well-executed gank by their squad. Well-executed indeed, and uh, uh, you have to say, Greasy Goblins, they are playing aggressive. And, you know, I kind of said at the start, um, these two teams, they know each other a lot, but th it's also like the preparation, right? Against a team like Greasy Goblins, you know that they're going to play aggressive. Against a, a jungler like Panini, you know he's going to look for these early plays. Doesn't matter what champion he's going to play. And I think the carelessness from Yang to not really think about what Panini's going to do or um, the, the aggression that he's going to apply onto the map is, uh, you have to say, potentially a lack of preparation. But um, yeah, nonetheless, Greasy Goblins looking absolutely fantastic in this game. Uh, as uh, this dragon contest, it will be the second dragon of the game. And if Yang secure this, it will be the second. If Greasy Goblins secure this, it will be their first. And you can imagine, if Greasy Goblins get this dragon, it will be super, super hard for Yang to scale. But again, if you know Panini, you also know him as a player that can be a little bit too aggressive at some of these plays, can have uh, little problems, and we see Gucci is collapsing yes. on it. Speaking of aggression, the Gucci Yang squad are not going to go down without a fight, and the fight continues. The first of all is God of Hacks, but look at Barack Ogama taking Kanzo out the fight, and they could just be too far ahead. There is no response from Ruzu as Cyberskirk arrives onto the scene, and it's going to be two kills going in favor of Greasy Goblins. Yeah, it looked so good for Gucci at the beginning, but I believe that once they jumped onto the Kanze, he flashes away from his team, and yeah, just a little bit of a mis-execution we see here. They try to scare out Revilo, but Revilo just calls for his team for a collapse. Beautiful interrupt by Flay. God of Hacks goes down right uh, right away, and they just want to fight more, but here we see the Sivir flashing away from her team and gets executed. After that, no more damage coming in from Gucci, as the Gangplank is in top lane, and there's no hope to win the fight after. 
Yeah, I have to say, on characteristic Maybe. mistakes coming in, but Rebreathe is going to use the teleport onto God of Snacks here. Play today actually brought to low HP, so this could be a one for one, and actually one for zero for now, but God of Snacks will eventually fall. He did use the flash on the ultimate, and it's just a kill on to the poppy. So I think Gucci Yang, they expended a lot here, and they will lose a lot in the mid lane. With Flay today going down, potentially not good as a hook goes on to Ravilo. Ravilo will use the flag and drag to try and get away. Will escape for now. We see Rubruth walking in on the side. I'm assuming he will throw the uh, the, the Sandra E. Oh, actually, no, he won't. He will just look to, to clear the wave so they secure themselves a plate. Um, I think, crucially, the kills are going into the hands of Kanza. But if you're Greasy Goblins, you're nine kills up to three. And uh, yeah, definitely in a comfortable position as uh, Ruzu is now going to come under some pressure here. Let's see if he is aware of it. There is a ward in the tri-bush, but I'm not sure if that spots out the members. Panini will now walk over this as the information is there. God of Hacks accidentally uh, splats against the wall as Flay today has now reactively arrived onto the scene to protect his top laner. And uh, the action will die down for now, but still Greasy Goblins in control of this game. Yeah, I think I'm looking at that Nocturne ultimate, I'm just looking to see where is he going to make the play, most likely around the second Herald, right, so uh, we'll see, any any misstep of Gucci will be punished instantly, we've seen uh, greasy governments today are on a very, very quick trigger, if Gucci, if, if Revilo here stays here for too long, I think he just might be jumped instantly. Yeah, he might be jumped indeed, and it's kind of one of those things when we've seen, seen we, we've actually seen Yang every single game play from ahead. This is actually, I think, the first time in the SLE that they are going to go into the mid and the late game at a deficit. Um, so, I mean, in a way, there's no Baron throw to be made. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, going to be great to see how, how this Yang team plays from behind. But more specifically, Greasy Goblins, when they get ahead, speaking of a team that gets ahead and, and rolls the game over, this is a team, when they get ahead, that go button hits, that green light goes, Panini makes aggressive plays. We see Cyberskirk has already started to use that teleport to make aggressive plays. And uh, speaking of, we could see a potential cross map here as uh, God of Snacks is in bot lane alone, does have both summoners as a... Uh, no response actually will come out. So, uh, Greasy Goblins secure the Rift Herald for absolutely free. God of Snacks playing very intelligently there, uh, knowing, sniffing out the potential dive. But he does have the Flash, he does have the Ghost and the Ultimate, so very, very difficult to gank him. And Rebreed, meanwhile, here uh, is here. Looks to be a little bit of trouble, but Gucci is just waiting to respond in the rush. Yeah, waiting to respond, and uh, more importantly, Lissandra Wave Clear is very, very good. So, quite difficult to push her down unless you get full committal onto that. As, um, you know, we said aggressive plays, and actually, we see here Panini in danger. Look at the damage already from the Gangplank, as the Nocturne Ultimate is going to be used. Paranoia is not going to be too effective, it's just going to be used as a defensive tool. As actually, Revilo forces himself to flash. Uh, I'm not sure what he flashed, but he flashed. Um, and uh, yeah, for now, it will just be, hey, oh, that, see, that was one of those moments where if Panini was slightly off timer there, he he would have given over a big shutdown, but he gets away with it this time, secures himself the enemy red buff, and uh, yeah, I think, crucially, control over top side, which means more easy access to this dragon, and last time around, we saw Cyberskirk teleport oh. in, oh, that's a good she classic, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Last time around, we saw Cyber's Kirk arrive with a teleport to support his team for that dragon take. And Ruzu did have the teleport available, did not expend it. Uh, so, is it how important is it going to be that uh, he, Ruzu supplies the, uh, the gangplank damage for this fight? Yeah, I think Kuchi just wants the gangplank to finish a couple of items and then they can fight. But... Uh... Yeah, we already see that uh, for the full, full, basically full damage uh, build coming in from the Nocturne. If a one battle lands, even at this stage of the game, it this does deal a lot of damage and uh, maybe a little bit panic there <laughs> from both sides. And they see an engage coming in. Yeah, we see an engage. God of Hacks goes for a hook onto Revilo, but it's just a little bit of a Facebook poke there. Zuruzu actually will get a top lane <laughs> turret here for himself and. Uh, Nice little bit of gold into the hands of the Gangplank, and I can imagine Gucci here. I actually really like what they're doing. They are trading the dragon because this is only their second rank. They're trading the dragon for a mid lane turret. So, crucially about this, is I think Greasy Goblins use two Rift Heralds 
for for mid lane here and uh Yang, just in one single push, will be able to take that down as uh, Greasy Goblins will try and prevent any return back to mid lane as uh, they will try to get their, their mid lane back themselves. Um, look at the positioning of Ravila. He will walk over this ward here. So, oh, and he is not aware that uh, there is a vision of him. So, Rubri, Ravila will play on the same side here. You know, usually with this kind of team comp, you want to play on separate sides. The Scatter of the Week will go on to Revelo first. The Syndra Stun is down, but it's just going to be used to ensure that the Rift Herald gets the charge. As uh, Greasy Goblins, they get the Dragon, they pop the Herald in the mid lane, they get a turret. So overall, decent trade for them. Um, and we'll be having that rebreed that actually uses the E forward, and that's actually going to force the Zaya ultimate out of God of Snacks. So just like that, rebreed putting the pressure on the AD carry of Greasy Goblins. It's, uh, there's a lot of action happening in this game. Yeah, Macro wise, I have to say it was a oh. good play by Gucci. They traded two turrets for uh, for just the second uh, second Drake of the game uh, for Greasy Goblins. Not that important, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe they could have just channeled the the Rift Herald mid lane before going for the before going for the for the Drake. It would have taken Gucci more time to stop that uh, uh, stop that uh, stop that approach, but. Uh, yeah, a little, little bit of a mistake by the side of Greasy Goblins. I, I'd say one of the first ones in this game because they have played this early game quite well so far. Really well, and as you can see, the gold lead is very, very much in their favor. But um, if you could just show the, the gold graph, uh, a little, not graph, but yeah, as you can see, um, the individual gold d differentials is heavily in favor of the top side of the Greasy Goblins map. A lot of kills in their favor. And speaking of top side, here comes the Paranoia onto Kanza the Sivir. We'll have to flash away. The Poppy ult is good. It takes the Nocturne out the fight and the sidestep onto the Nautilus hook. But Kanza is the focus here. But here comes the rest of the team. And Rebreed is going to find a catch onto God of Snacks and God of Hacks. Barakagama has arrived. The scatter of the weak damage is big. But look at Kanza and Ruzu doing the DPS in the back line. Ravilo flag and drags forward. Barakagama under threat. No mana for the Nocturne here. Jungle Buddha, Barakagama on the retreat as two. Three kills go into the favor of Gucci Yang, and just like that, the game is back on level ten. Well, not level ten, as the gold lead is still in favor, but it's much closer <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, Gucci actually chooses not to go for the Baron right now, but they see so much going for Kanzek, but he flashes gate, the spell shields, then the Nautilus assault, then a volley bear is coming in here as well. Not that much damage gone to the Kanzek. I Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, uh, the counter engage coming from Boot beautifully and uh, just what you said perfectly word for word in the draft uh Nazaya struggling so much in these team fights all of her team is running forward she is trying to follow up but just gets destroyed on the back line once uh while the whole team is chasing the civet yeah and what i really like about that spe specific play from gucci yang that i think them as a team they know and the rest of the league knows their star player is kanza here and he was under so much pressure i think normally you go and try and peel for your star man but the adaptation was made rebreathe he went forward he didn't peel for the server he trusted kanza was going to live throughout that fight he went forward found a catch onto god of snacks he knew the flash was down from earlier the ultimate was used earlier i'm gonna find a free catch on this guy sign him up and yes, we talked about it. Zaya does not like running forward. And when she does run forward, she doesn't get feathers down onto the ground that are lethal enough to, to pull back and do that crazy amount of damage that we know Zaya to do. And uh, she does get caught as uh, right now. There's a potential play onto her, but it will just be a scary uh, face down as God of Snacks. I think he himself has started to realize that Zaya is difficult to play here and um, will have to play as safe as he possibly can. But critically... Kanze played it out very well, but he has the resources blown right now. He does not have the summoner spells, so this is the window that Greasy Goblins need. Uh, they have, they still have the gold lead. Nocturne is still extremely strong, so if they can make something happen in this 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 gap, these two and a half more minutes uh, that uh, Kanze's flash and Ghost are still down, they, they they can make something happen right here. And I think the dragon fight is going to be in this interval. Yeah, but I think more importantly, that was the first skirmish or fight that Ruzu was involved in. And we see already the damage that the Gangplank is doing. He's already now building towards that third item. Two and a half items completed on the board. If he was doing that much damage in that fight, once he gets those barrels off with the setup of Rebreathe and Revelo, Ruzu could be the key factor to carry this game through. But for Greasy Goblins, it looks like they've got control of this objective. And it looks like once again, uh, they will start up the, the dragon themselves. 
Oh, but this is an interesting approach by Gucci here. They don't go for the second midline turret. This time they go to challenge. Do not want to put uh, put the Greasy Gummons at the sole point. And we'll see how can they approach this. They do like the fight better if uh, Greasy Gummons are running into them, I believe. Oh, yeah, and we'll Play Today's ult. Play Today uses the Keeper's Verdict, and it's gonna knock out the Volley Bear! The place. Dragon is stealing! Stop the fight by Revealo as the fight continues! Check out for the Gambag Barrels, and it's gonna be big! Revealo gets a kill onto Kudos Snacks, and the chase starts again! Counter pushes forward, gets a shot down onto Barco Gurma! Cyber Scout has arrived back onto the scene, but that's not gonna be enough! The Volley Bear ult finishes off Revealo, but he's gonna go down, and that's gonna be that team fight win! Going in favor of Gucci Yang! The presence of mind by Fe SLE veteran play today does not go for the typical target of pop the jungler, but goes to ult out the frontliner in Volibear. They have absolutely no tankiness left after that, and Gucci just collapses on them. We see play today channels it on 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 the on the Volibear there. Die the, the, the Lissandra dies instantly as well, but Sivir is absolutely untouched, and together with the Gamplank, they are raining down the damage. The mid laner is not the damage dealer here for Gucci, and once the both of the carries actually survive, they they're just uh, they're just rolling over the Greasy Goblin side. Yeah, and that's the problem with this team composition from Greasy Goblins. They need to play together because if they don't, this Zaya genuinely doesn't provide anything for their team composition. And, you know, you said Rebri, he got knocked out straight away at the start of that fight. He didn't even use the Lissandra ultimate. So if that gets used in a future team fight, it will be even more lethal for the Greasy Goblins team as Revilo might try to look for a catch, but knows that there are people around. So will flag and drag yeah. away. But yeah, as you said, great initiative from Flay today to take out Cybers Kirk from that team fight. He has noted that this volleyball has been causing havoc in our back line take that guy out and the rest is history so gangplank um and jarvan doing so much work here in these team fights but crucially as you said kanza untouched completely as that play today might walk a little bit too aggressively and is going to be able to get away but having to use the flash as he was surrounded by greasy goblins members and what we see now ruzu was on the side lane tp'd into that fight so TP down means that rebreathe with his TP available will go into the side lane and uh, we could see a Baron dance here. Oh, as a hook lands on to Flay today. No Keeper's Verdict to be channeled just yet, but take a look for the fight. The damage dealers are starting to arrive. The teleport from Rebreathe is here. Shut down, already going into the hands of Kanza. That's Panini going down. And the rest of the Greasy Goblins members are on the run. Kichi Yang trying to push forward. Baraka Gum has been shown onto the mid lane. Uh, but that's just going to be it as Gucci Yang will try to push the wave. And you can imagine it will be the Baron buff attention. But knowing Gucci Yang, they are absolutely terrified of this objective as they have thrown <laughs> way too many games on this. So they will just uh, look at it, contemplate whether or not they should do it, decide not to do it, and then run home. Yeah, a little bit of panic coming in from, uh, here from Greasy Goblins. They just go all in at the play today, but they don't have enough damage. And again, Gangplank is here free hitting. Uh, Kanze is here free hitting. And Gucci even, they could have even uh, chased maybe a little bit more here. And uh, they kind of shown mercy onto the Greasy Goblins side. But Panini finally dies as well. The last player to, to not okay. die a single time this game goes down. The shutdown going, I believe, for Kanze here. And this Sivir has gotten so, so big, and as long as she does not get engaged on, uh, together with the Gangplank, together with Rozo, they're, they're just rolling over them, uh, and there's no stopping. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed is, I, actually, when it comes to team play, I would always favor the Greasy Goblins. They're a group of friends. They've been playing together for a long time. But what we're seeing here is team play alongside, uh, with a dash of macro, because what I've noticed is Gucci Yang, in the last two instances, they had Ruzu in the top lane uncontested. He teleported to the fight and made a big difference. This time around, it was Rebreathe in the side lane uncontested. He teleports into the fight and makes a big difference. And Greasy Goblins, they have teleports as well, but they're not matching in side lanes. What they're doing is they're seeing, ah, there's two members, there's one on side lane, not necessarily thinking about that potential of a teleport coming in. And as soon as that teleport comes in, that's where the play goes completely the wrong mm -hmm. way for them. So they definitely need to start looking out for these teleports and understanding that if someone's in the side lane, they're probably there because they have a way and then access to get to this fight. So yeah, Greasy Goblin is playing a little bit sloppy against this side lane pressure that the uh, Lissandra and the Gangplank have at the current moment. So, um, 
yeah, uh, if I'm Greasy Goblins, you definitely need to send a Syndra or a Volibear to start matching these guys um, to ensure that you can follow up with these teleports. But I have to say, the draft from uh, Greasy Goblins really, really turning out problematic here. Uh, Gucci have actually drafted uh, themselves quite big advantages in these teamfights. Uh, the Nocturne wants to kind of jump in, right? Uh, so does the Volibear. So does the, the, the Nautilus to some extent. But uh, once they do that, the backline uh, coming, the, the Syndra and uh, and uh, what's uh, the Zaya as well, right? They have to go through a Gangplank Ultimate. They have to go through Gangplank Battles. They have to watch out of the Syndra engage and the Lissandra engage onto them. And there's nobody helping them uh, really in this team fight, these team fights. And uh, we see they just get rolled. It feels like once uh, once DC governments get the jump off onto the target, uh, there's no follow up damage because it's so difficult to play for uh, for these uh, low mobility champions uh, on the greasy government's backline. Very difficult indeed, and 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 the thing about Nocturne and. Uh... It's really important to make sure that your farm numbers are high, and yes, he got himself loads of kills, but it's that thing, right? You could be super fed, but what that does mean is that your shutdown is uh, going to increase over time, and that shutdown's already gone. So Panini giving over a lot of gold without accumulating a large amount of gold for himself, um, or at least yeah, he accumulated a lot of gold, but not enough to, to make a massive impact in these team fights. And Panini, he was four kills to one, making so many early game plays. And yes, of course, there is that argument that he, he deserves more coming out from his carries uh, in this game because of what he, he provided in the early game. But right now, I'm not seeing much coming out of the Nocturne in some of these uh, late game team fights. Um, well, it's not late game, it's 26 minutes. These guys are just perma fighting um see this is why this is why it's cool when friends play against each other they just fight it's kind of like ah oh, wait we don't have any friends ah oh, don't worry about it anyway um but yeah yeah as i said the knock 10 definitely has fallen off in strength as uh in the, some of the recent i mean you can see it, the the cs deficit that revealer has uh you know got over his opponent jungler um and yeah not in uh well we'll see if he can Pull out a key ultimate or look for a big pick later on, but right now, reveal on the Jarvan much more of a threat than this Nocturne. Yeah, I, I believe it just needs a little bit different approach from Greasy Goblins. The team fights are not working, they need to recognize the fact that uh, just a just draft, uh, just the comps they have uh, drafted themselves in a 5v5. This is not working out for them. I, I think they need to match, send someone to match this gangplank. They need to send the Panini on the Jungle Buddha on the Nocturne to, to shadow them. And once there's a slight misstep from Ruzu, they need to punish that. But uh, you see, there's going to be a Baron Dance. And this has not gone so well for Gucci. So let's see if they have changed their approach. No, it doesn't. But uh, Gucci won't use that Baron to finish it. They will just use it to lure out the Greasy Goblins members. They were standing in the Fog of War for a while, so we'll just use that Baron to make sure that the Greasy Goblins member stand up. But we talked about over-aggression! Jungle Buddha just walks up to Revelo and finds himself caught out, but the rest of the team got a back spot to low HP. Here comes Revelo, drag and drag over the Lord to secure that kill. Kanza running forward, laying down the damage onto Cybers Kirk and got off snacks with the Boomerang Blades. And that's gonna be the focus of the Baron from Gucci Yang as the jungler, the oh, captain yeah. of Greasy Goblins, overextend. And uh, Gucci Yang, well, we've seen Baron contest before. Let's see if they can secure this one as the Baron gets down to 2k HP and the spike goes through. The Baron is successfully taken by Gucci Yang, Ooh. which means <laughs> they won't just randomly throw the game. Um, as uh, Yeah, they will also go for the dragon now. Yeah, we see that it's just a um, little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, just caught sleeping there. Jungle Buddha just walking up and uh, gets engaged on straight away. Not a lot of tankiness coming in from uh, this Nocturne's build, and uh, he cannot play like that. He he needs to find angles for him to uh, to make successful engages, and they get punished instantly. And this Sivir. After a pretty difficult early game, after some couple of mistakes, Kanze on the Sivir, once he procs his go or Ghost and his ultimate in these teamfights, he's just running over them. Yeah, he's putting down so much damage. And alongside the setup of Revelo, I have to give him a sh shout out here. The early game, Panini was putting down so much pressure. Revelo knew, I put my head down. I will get my gold that I need to get. And in the mid to late game teamfights, I will create the setup 
for my carries in the late game. So he's doing a fantastic job on the job. And, and, and take a look at that. So yes, he has kept this lead up uh, very, very well throughout the game, which is it, is, a, it is a difficult thing to do as a jungler, especially when you're kind of running around the map making plays. And uh, yeah, I think good Xi Yang now with the Baron buff secured, will try to push through the Greasy Goblin's base. And uh, despite um, consecutive plays going very well for good Xi Yang, uh, this game is far from over. There is still a Syndra with Rabadon's death cap. There is still a Zaya building towards three items. There is still a Nocturn ultimate. And Greasy Goblin, they have, they have fallen off a little bit, but they're definitely not out of this game. It's not over at all. Uh, and if Greasy Goblins can find themselves not 5v5s, maybe if they can find themselves some smaller skirmishes, they can do a lot. But against this Baron buff, it's so difficult to deny 5v5. Yeah, very difficult indeed, but all it takes is a big scatter of the week landing onto key targets for that go button to hit. And uh, that's where the Greasy Goblins will look towards their man in the mid lane to try and look for a pick. They will look towards their captain to make that good call. And uh, Greasy Goblins, as you can see, they're trying to move around as a unit, but... As I said, that scatter of the week, it has to land on a key target. We see the damage it's doing to Revilo, and it's barely taking a chunk out of him. And we know how much damage Syndra can do. If that f finds a, a land on to Rebreather Kanza, it could be lethal. As uh, we see there, that hit Kanza, and that was a much bigger chunk than it was on the job. And, and uh, yeah, it, 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 if that hits with a with a much healthier wave for them, then uh, Gucci Yang could definitely be in danger. And we see Jungle Buddha still just uh, grouping 4v4 in the mid lane. I do think they need to just pull the trigger onto the top laner, onto the gangplank, the main damage dealer. And uh, I, I don't see them winning this 4v4 or successfully engaging against them. So maybe, maybe a little bit of uh, inexperience, maybe just a little bit of not un uncharacteristically for, uh, for Jungle Buddha, for Panini here to not go for these plays uh, quicker. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's kind of feels a little bit frozen here. Yeah, he does indeed, but to say, I have to be, uh, I, I will commend him. He had a fantastic early game. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, it's just unfortunate here that God of Snacks on the Zaya, very difficult game to play. We've talked about this so many times, but he is currently, I think, if you put the gold up again, we could probably see that he probably is the furthest behind his, uh, opposite counterpart. And yep, uh, he, he is indeed like, uh, almost, uh, four, 5k gold down onto Kanza here on the Sibir and uh, I mean it's not any fault of his own because if I'm Zaya here I'm kind of wondering to myself what do I do like um yeah. I, I, who do I hit to, to do damage like how do I keep myself alive and you know you want to use your ultimate effectively but all these fights you have a Lissandra you have a Jarman you have GP Barrels you basically have to ult straight away or Lissandra ult goes off you didn't go the cleanse uh, you don't have much tenacity uh, or any uh if um you know, he's done the regular AD carry runes and uh, really tough game for God of Snacks here. And he's a really good player. And unfortunately, just the Zaya pick itself is uh, not doing him too many favors. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if, if I'm approaching this fight as, a, as an AD carry, as a God of Snacks here, I'm just thinking, okay, in team fight, I need to uh, hit the Gangplank Barrels. And then when Lissandra comes in, I need to ult uh, Prout preferably once the Lissandra ult, so it goes off. And then I need to wait out the Lissandra Zonia. And then I can start to think about fighting a team fight, but by then it's already over. So yeah. Yeah, there's just no approach here for God of Snacks. And kind of similar situation for Barak Ogama as well here, right? Uh, because they, he, he can approach the fight as well. So difficult, difficult yeah, 5v5 yeah. Five here. Yeah, speaking of difficulty, it's once again Panini getting caught out in the mid lane, and that's gonna be basically the end of the fight. Kanza is kiting Cybers Kirk on the back line, but look at Revilo causing havoc. He kicks down God of Snacks first. Barack Obama is next on the menu. You are not the president of the United States anymore. Oh, wait, that's Obama, not Obama. And Revilo lands another flag and drag. Kanza's here to land the damage, and that's gonna be Gucci Yang. They don't even need this Dragon Soul. That's gonna be the base. Game one going into the hands of Gucci Yang. Yeah, that's gonna be 1-0 going on for Gucci Yang. Uh, they have uh, they have named themselves uh, at least addition to win the first game of the series so far in SLE, and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see if they can seal the deal in the game two. Meanwhile, for Greasy Goblins, 
such a dominant, dominant early game. They played so well, even with kind of a scaling uh, scaling jungler like the Nocturne, setting up so many good ganks. I think the first 9 to, to 12 minutes of the game, they just played it perfectly. Everything went right for them, but... Uh, yeah, uh, after that, they, they started to look lost. And after that first uh, team fight loss that they suffered, they just kept repeating the same mistakes and uh, did not change their approach at all. So maybe a little bit of talks with the coach uh, about how to how to transition and how to change up the game plan in moments like these. But uh, so far, Gucci looking strong today. Yeah, looking good indeed. And, you know, I, I I think strong is a word that I'm not going to expend just <laughs> now. The early game definitely went a very haywire for them. A few mishaps, and I think um, what I would say for the Greasy Goblins, that early game was fantastic. It was textbook. It was one of the best we, we would ever see in a, in a league like this. And it's usually the case of the difficulty there is carrying out the game and uh, being able to play transition into the next phase of the game correctly and what we saw was they were trying too hard to group up together and look for picks and um what gucci yang did they sort of hit the pause button they said hang on let's just get some gold into our gangplank let's get some gold into the server and what what greasy goblins did they were they were getting picks onto lalisandra we saw three men gank onto lalisandra but at the end of the day lalisandra is a supportive character he is a side character he's a sidekick in this film the main characters were ruzu the main characters were kanza because they were going to be the ones to do the damage and who were the two people left isolated to just farm up to get their items it was them and more importantly someone else who farmed up a storm was ravilo in the jungle and traditionally jarvan not a champion you want to spend too much time farming up but i assume he was looking at panini going like you're a nocturne who's not farming why would I, why would I, you know, I outscale you anyway, I'm just going to pick up farm for myself, and in late game, you won't do much, and that's exactly what we saw, and unfortunately for Greasy Goblins, I think, despite the great early game, I think it was just the transition from early to mid, you do have to play that out differently, and you, in a way, against Gangplank Silver, you have a timer in which you need to end the game, otherwise these guys will just clear waves, they will just farm, scale up, etc, etc, so... I think, uh, yeah, I think going into the next game, Greasy Goblins, definitely be positive, be optimistic, because that early game was great. And if you can have the same early game you had that time around, Good Xin Yang, they've got the uh, narrative buff against them where they just never win game two, even though they've done it once. Um, so you will, you know, you can obviously play off that as uh, going into next game. We've seen Good Xin Yang go up in the series before. Second game looks good in the game. Uh, I'm going to go grab a snack, you come back, and they've lost. So for Gucci Yang, it's all about making sure that they uh, keep up the, the good work, don't make too many mistakes, and uh, this second game will be extremely exciting to watch. But yeah, I believe uh, uh, we are going to head into a break. Guys, do not go anywhere, as uh, Greasy Goblins Gucci Yang will continue very soon.
And we're back with game two, SLE Gucci and versus Greasy Goblins. Two highly, highly rated teams, two very skilled hey, teams hey. at uh, at the up of the of the SLE standings. Gucci winning the game one, but it was such a such a two two chapter game there. Uh, Greasy Goblins playing out a beautiful, beautiful early game, landing so many successful ganks, getting themselves, I believe, what was a five thousand gold lead in like uh, thirteen minutes. So. Yeah, it was so well played by them, but just then, the, then the page turned, the different chapters started, and Gucci started to turn these team fights around. Critically behind champions like uh, Gangplank and the Sivir, the one engage in the mid lane did not work out, and uh, yes, the draft gap started to become huge, and there was no no changes from VC Goblins. And after that, yeah, we will see if uh, if something will change. Uh, in this game too, and we already see the Sivir ban actually coming in from Gucci Yan. Yeah, like I said, Gucci Yang in game two, usually uh, their own enemies as they ban away their own champion. Uh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, there has to be some inclination that uh, Greasy Goblins can take that. And this time they are on blue side. So take a quick look and see what they prioritize. Because you can imagine, you know, they, they've shown the Nautilus, they've shown the Lilia, they've shown the Poppy priority. There's probably a lot of options that Gucci Yang can go with. With the Bard and Ash taking out Sivir as well, there's a lot of options that they, that they have here. And uh, Gucci, yeah, as you, as you said, Gucci and in, in, uh, Yang in that last game, um, they were able to come back from quite a large deficit. But despite the comeback, there was still a large deficit and that definitely has to be the focus for greasy goblins i don't think it's necessarily a screw the game plan screw our identity you know they they just draft scaling blah blah, blah. we don't know what to do i think it's a case of keep up that early game because that was so so good but next time around maybe put put your strong members on the side lanes to contest the scaling that Yang has on the side lane. Maybe uh, try and avoid over aggression in the enemy jungle to get picked out. Uh, well, no, well, I mean, if you go overly aggressive against an Ivan, you definitely get punished as that's the uh, the priority pick for a good Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we start, we start Greasy Goblins picking the, picking the Nautilus there and early, and then we'll see if they will actually select it again. Again, here Gucci, Gucci showed that they have answer for that champion. Then again, it is a flex fix for, fix for them, and we see the famous Panini Y coming in. First time I saw this guy, he was on Y, and uh, back in that moment, uh, uh, the LAC, the Vitality Jungler, uh, was, uh, was an absolute smurf in, in LAC, and. Uh, I said to Panini, your Vi looks like exactly like uh, Bo's uh, Vi, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he was absolutely insane on this champion, and uh, I think in that game he absolutely outmatched the uh, Dutch, the SLE GOAT jungler, and then uh, we see that the high heavy playmaking jungler coming in here as well, and again, he will be the one diving in these team fights. and Kai's coming in here as well, uh, so yeah. yeah, we might see it being paired up with something like an Autos if Gucci doesn't pick it up. Kaiser coming in, actually, I'll, I'll touch a bit more on why that is big as Ezra gets followed up here is a uh, Vi, um, a champion that I think and and I I will actually uh, do a bit of conclusion as to Creation Goblins having done a bit of a a smart smart maneuver here. Oh, Zeri into Vi. Yeah, that's an interesting pick. Zeri into Vi. Vi often picked as a counter to the Zeri. But uh, yeah, yep. uh, Kansa very feeling very really confident on the Zeri champion. Actually, Zeri gaining a lot of popularity these days in SLE as well. Uh, a champion that um, some AD carries don't play that much. But um, and we see the Nautilus coming in here as well. Uh, a champion that definitely would have been picked on the side of Greasy Goblins if Gucci would have let it through here. And uh, yeah, again, that's... it's a flex pick for them, so it's very interesting to see where it's going to go. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was just kind of like, if Nautilus gets through here, the game is basically over. But uh, yeah, they secure themselves the Nautilus, making sure that Greasy Goblins do not get their hands on that. As that Kaisa Nautilus into Azeri uh, and whatever would have been dangerous as they do go for the Blitzcrank here. And I think really good because Vi set up as a free hook literally a free hook so um yeah I, I really like that but i wanted to add yeah panini on the vi a champion that has fallen out of the meta you know we look at pro play it was usually pick a ban nowadays not so much it doesn't get prioritized as it did back then but it is one or if not panini's 
best champions. When I think of Finini, I think of Vi. I think, mm -hmm. what's the champion he's going to pick to make sure he's got the highest chance of winning the game? It is this champion. So he's locked that in. And the thing about SLE, comfort over meta has always been the name of the game. And we've seen so many times in the SLE, players, their main champion might not necessarily be in the meta, but they go for it anyways. And it always works out for them. So Finini this time, uh, it, it will be him in that spotlight. So draft already uh, i think in terms of comfort looking very heavily in favor of the greasy goblins and i think you know kind of touching on on the ad carry situation here is i know kanza his champion pool it's specific he's got the champions that he likes he's got the champions that he knows how to play um and here it's been sort of pinched up ash band severe band kaisa taken away from him so he's gonna have to go outside of what we all know kanza to pick and he's gone for the zarian this time he did hover the ezreal which is a champion we all know he plays but he's goes he goes for the zarian up against kaisa uh vi and i'm assuming greasy goblins will start layering uh on top of this vi will be very challenging I was about to say, um, Greasy Goblins, even with the Y and even with the Blitzkrank, I don't think it's necessarily a reliable engage. And I was thinking, since they have the blue, uh, since they have the first pick in the second second phase of the draft, I was thinking maybe they will go for the Orton, maybe they will go for a champion that does force uh, these team fights uh, to be fought uh, at, uh, at like a frontal type of approach uh, from uh, Gucci, but uh, no, they banned the Orton themselves, and uh, I do that with the mobility coming in from Zeri, with the shields and uh, coming in from Ivern, they still lack uh, like a lot of engage. And uh, I'm curious to see what's going to come here. Maybe something like a Malphite or something. Yeah, we'll have to see. And uh, more importantly, um, this Nautilus and Greasy Goblins will for sure know this is that Greasy Goblins is a flex pick. Rebreathe has played it twice last week. So when it comes to lack of engage, if that's something they need to start picking up now, Gucci Yang can definitely do that. They can put that Nautilus into the mid lane, and this is the strength of a mid laner like Rebreathe. Uh, and we've seen several players follow a lot along these lines. Uh, Cassante is being hovered into Renekton, and I think this is a Renekton favored matchup, but we all know Ruzu is a very, very favorable Cassante player as he locks that in. He's absolutely insane on this champion. I believe it's Ruzu's best champion. Uh, the Cassante, he already showed his prowess in actual last season on the Gucci squad as being carrying even some games on the Cassante pick, but uh, yeah, they get more comfort picks uh, Gucci getting here, and uh, we will see if it's going to be the, the, the flex mid Nautilus with this last pick. No, it looks like it won't be. Yeah, it won't be Lissandra coming in here again, and uh, we already saw Rebreed showing uh, lots of confidence onto this pick. Yeah, and you know, we said uh, lack of engage, but there's the engage. It comes from Rebreathe, and it seems like Rebreathe has kind of found his identity into this team. Uh, and as I said before, he was the question mark, but you know, he looks like he's found his place as that playmaker, that setup for, for Kanza and Ruzu. As, uh, 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 Ruzu will get his uh, main champion. And speaking of main champions, it is Barack Ogama on the silence. And crucially, he's got, you know, we didn't get the Nautilus, but we can get that Nautilus ultimate. And uh, talk about threats onto the Zeri. Silas taking away that Nautilus ultimate, putting that on the Zeri, layering it with the Vi follow up and the Kaiser. This is a very scary game uh, when you're looking at it from uh, Kansas' perspective. Absolutely. Brilliant pick actually coming in from uh, here from uh, Greasy Goblins with the Silas. I'm not sure about the matchup. I think it's a it's a playable matchup for Nautilus against Alessandra in the mid lane as well. So yeah, with with uh, with champion like Zeri on Kanza, uh, getting the Nautilus's ult uh, from the Silas, uh, actually very very smart adaptation. Still, uh, I believe that DC Goblins lack hard engage. I still think it's quite conditional. So yeah, it will be on them to kind of skill check uh, Gucci at some of these fights and. Uh, Last time we saw some a couple of mistakes by Kanze, and let's see if uh, the Zeri he can uh, if he can pilot the Zeri flawlessly. Yeah, it's going to be important in the positioning, spacing, uh, being able to stay away from that Vi Ultimate range is going to be crucial. And more importantly, Silas takes that Nautilus Ultimate. Gucci Yang will approach team fight with caution. They will have that in the back of their minds. I think the crucial aspect here is Gucci Yang first picked an Ivan and Greasy Goblins have gone and then picked a full engaged team composition, which naturally when you see an Ivan, 
probably the best disengaged champion or supportive champion in the meta right now. You usually do not want to go full engage as uh, what they have done here. Um, so yeah. uh, Ravilo will play a big part in making sure he keeps his team alive. And uh, I think when it comes to a game like this, funnily enough, Daisy. Daisy's the sixth man. Daisy's the sixth champion in that team composition because uh, the amount of damage and uh, knock up that uh, that Daisy can do, three auto attacks, that's all it takes. And that's like a, what do you call it? I guess you could refer it to like a Braum ultimate. A mini Braum ultimate will land onto your team, and it's like the difference is Braum ultimate. The Braum has to land it. Daisy, that, I'm pretty sure that's uh, not dodgeable, or at least very difficult to dodge uh, just with a sidestep. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes out on that. Uh, and I think, I think Greasy Goblins, um, they've got a lot of comfort picks here. I think that's the name of the game that they've gone for. I think what they've done is that first game when it comes to drafting, when it comes to, you know, trying to match this, like, it's a background sound made me love. <laughs> <laughs> when, it comes to when it comes to drafting, it looks like Yang uh, uh, have the edge. And when it comes to uh, playing the meta, it might be Yang that have, 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 the, uh, have the edge there. But Greasy Goblins, they've gone and said, screw that, screw the meta, S screw team composition. Let's go for our comfort picks. Let's go for what we know and what we're good at and make sure we approach this game at our best. Panini on the Vi, Barakugama on the Silas, and God of Snacks on the Kaiser. Uh, they've got a lot of tools here to make sure that they, they are as comfortable as possible. Yep. Yes, indeed. And uh, this time, so much more potential action actually coming in from both sides. Last game, we, th we told that, oh... There's one potential uh, clear gank uh, gank opportunity for uh, both sides. This time, I believe every single uh, lane presents an opportunity for a successful gank, for, uh, for a great uh, dynamic fight. And uh, this time, yeah, we might see so much more action in the early game, even though last game we saw a lot of action, and especially coming in from Greasy Goblins. Yes, a lot of action indeed. And uh, I, I can imagine Greasy Goblins will try to replicate that same theme and uh, i think when it comes to scaling you like last game the scaling wasn't great it, it was like your only option really was a zaya uh sorry a syndra because i'm i'm going to take into account the fact that zaya had an unplayable game uh up against uh, last game's team composition this time around they ensure that kaiser and silas are in their draft to make sure that there is some sort of late game agency some sort of a uh, late game ability that their carries can have to carry the game I think crucially, so you mentioned the Silas and Telesandra. It is winnable for the Silas for sure, don't get me wrong. But up until level 6, if Rebreathe plays oppressive in lane, I can so imagine the Silas being under threat because Lissandra will basically want to stand in the wave. Silas doesn't like it when people stand in the wave because you want to land your E. If Silas lands chains, then that's almost always going to be a favorable trade for him. Um, Lissandra, Silas dashes forwards, Lissandra just presses W walks away, throws a Q for the slow, and then kind of laughs in your face. And last game, Ruby went with the Electrocute setup against the Syndra. This time around, could even do could even do more. And if Ravilo once again plays aggressively uh, onto, onto mid lane, then it could be a very difficult situation for Barakagama. So I think in order for this Silas to, to get through to that late game and be seriously impactful, um, it will be important for him to get out of this laning phase unscathed and... I mean, he is a fantastic Silas player, one of the best I've seen in the SLE, so definitely a name and a player that can do that with uh, comfort. Uh, comfort. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of slander coming in for the Blitzcrank pick <laughs> in the Twitch chat. Oh, uh, yeah. so in some of these moments, actually, the players have proved wrong and uh, have had an absolute star performance is onto, onto this uh, this kind of a coin-flippy champion, uh, which Blitzcrank is, in, yeah. in my opinion. And, uh, I mean, if if it if it's if it's gonna if the stars will align, we will see an absolute star performance here from uh, God or yeah. God of uh, God of Snacks uh, or God of Hacks. Uh, which one was the super? God, God of Hacks. God of Hacks. Yeah, God of, God of Hacks. Yeah, and people will say, oh, he's he's hacking with all those hooks. So <laughs> yeah, the, the the name is setting up a potential uh, star game and breakout performance for God of Hacks. So uh, we will see if it will be go. Yeah, uh, we'll see if it's uh, check his PC or check his PayPal history because, uh, I mean, yeah, as you said, uh, Blitzcrank, it can go one of two ways. And I think it speaks even more volumes for that saying in this game because 
Who are you going to hook? You hook a Lissandra, Lissandra gets a, a free W onto your entire team. You hook Ivan, you're probably going to hook Daisy first, so you're not going to hook Ivan. Um, if you hook Nautilus, then, I mean, I don't even need to touch on that. Same thing with Cassante. The only person you want to hook is the Zeri. The chances of that happening are very slim. There's the other side. The thing about Blitzcranks in the SLE, whenever I see it, my brain, it's like, this just looks dumb. This just looks goofy. It doesn't make sense. Randomly, at minute 38 over Elder Dragon objective, there's just some one random hook into Fog of War. It lands on the most fed member on enemy team. He gets one shot and then you win the game, right? I've seen this happen in SLE so many times. And that's the magic, right? That's the magic of this Blitzcrank pick. Yes, on paper. Looks really dumb. But we're in the SLE. Sometimes dumb things make sense. Like, you know, randomly roll swapping your jungler to support and then winning the split once again. Right? Stuff like that. For whatever reason, it works. Um, and here, on the Blitzcrank. Yeah, the slander, I get it. It doesn't really make sense. And in terms of who you're going to hook... Yeah, not great. But it's like, <laughs> we're in the SLE... We're in the SLA, right? That one random magic hook that flies through the entire front line of Gichi Yang, it could happen. And when it does, it's going to be hilarious. So we're going to look forward to that, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, the Y pick getting a little bit of commentary as well, being played into a single threat, a single damage uh, comp. Zeri is the main damage sword from Gucci. Uh, coming in here, and yeah, if, if if she can find a good ult, if she can isolate Zeri and then being followed up by champions like, uh, like the Kaiser, like the Silas, uh, the, the Renekt, and that can follow up quite quickly as well. Kansen might be in trouble here, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, might be in trouble indeed, but uh, crucially, I think, you know, the, I think I think the criticisms against the Vi mainly comes from the fact that oh, oh no can't say oh he spats it out oh oh god oh god oh god he's not hacking oh okay right <laughs> um you know what? we're just gonna pretend like this didn't happen uh, funnily enough Blitzcrank also didn't buy an item so good start from God of Hacks um, oh boy you know you know for, wait wait for all we know this is him just being like. Uh, in comms right now, he's saying like, "All right, guys, level one. I'm just gonna act like an absolute idiot, right? And then uh, they're gonna get this false, uh, <laughs> false idea that I'm really bad, and then randomly just predict every hook from that point on." Uh, but yes. we'll have to see. But yeah, no. As I was saying, the 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 criticism of the Vi pick mainly comes from the fact that Ivan was picked first. This is a you know, as I said, it's a disengaged champion. It, it's, it's 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 clear and clean and simple, right? And you just don't generally want to pick a champion like Vi into that because let's say you put a Vi ultimate, let's say the Vi ultimate does go into Kanza, there's not going to be much that can follow up in terms of burst, and more importantly, there's going to be an Ivan shielding shielding this area up, and uh, yeah, that, that makes it more difficult. So, um, yeah, we'll see. What do you even? Uh, picking the champion like Ivan, it feels like such a dominant, dominant champion in this meta that uh, there's almost no clear answers to this champion, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's a really challenging one because, I mean, I think this is what has pushed Ivan into the top tiers of the jungle pool is that when it comes to picks, you need to get a little bit creative in terms of what to pick against it. But mm. I think oftentimes it is things like things that can cc him from if you can lock him down put some cc on top of him to prevent him from shielding his team things like i don't know just off the top of my head i think fiddle six is not bad into into ivan mm. uh i think things like kane actually is decent into ivan um yeah uh, evelyn as well evelyn kind of ignores the uh the shielding because she's just broken stupid so lucky champion but then again it's like oh, oh my god speaking of those what did i tell you play today gets hooked under the turret god of hack secures himself first blood i told you boys it was just a route it was just an oscar worthy performance as god of hacks gets a hook onto the turret and flay today goes down that was a beautiful, beautiful hook. God of Hacks just predicting the minion movement there and uh, the, the execution that where, where play today is going to go to get these Targon stacks. And just, just that was just lovely. God of Hacks pulling out the yeah. hacks. 
Great stuff in the mid lane, but here we said Barakagama will come under some heat. So Revealer and Rebreathe will try to play out this gank. Barakagama holding on to the summoner spells for now. Panini, you can expect a flash Q, but great reactions from Rebreathe is going to get him out. So flash is traded for now, which, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, Grizzly Goblins, you, you're quite happy with that. Beautifully, beautifully played here so far. Uh, mechanics coming out of these... Uh these SLE players. First off, that Barako Gamma, I think uh, he played it out very well as as, as well. And oh, and another yeah. good clash. Yeah, this time around, it's Revilo making these early game plays as a uh, flash blown in mid, flash blown in bot, and uh, that is a uh, well, by without a flash, not as essential, but Kaiser crucially without the flash and uh, Revilo visits mid lane once again. Barako Gamma still has his flash, so I can assume Ivan will just be here to. Ensure that the wave goes in. As you can see on your minimap, Panini is also arriving onto mid lane. As that uh, God of Hacks walking up lands oh. another. Oh my God! <laughs> These players are playing Yo. very well. Very well. Micro mechanics here from both sides. Their play today this time sniffs out the hook and cancels it out with uh, Nautilus's uh, own hook. Uh, beautifully, beautifully played by both of these supports. Yeah. Play today kind of just went, Ezreal can do it, uh, Zeri can do it, Vayne can, I can do it too, uh, on the Nautilus as uh, uh, Spider-Man hooks himself uh, uh, to safety there, despite getting hooked, so great initiative by him to do that. As uh, Let's take a look at the farm numbers, because initially already, the solo lanes from Greasy Goblins um, uh, are really far ahead over their opposite numbers. Well, a bit ahead indeed, two, 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 one, two minions in mid lane, uh, ten minions in top lane in this Renekt and favored matchup, so well done by them so far, Cyber uh, here in top lane uh, winning the matchup as well. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just so impressed, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see, I, I love to see well executed uh, mechanics by champions, and uh, so far in this game, high, high level, uh, high level from both sides, I, I love to see it. I love from both sides indeed, and I think one of the most interesting things about watching these is that this is a community league, this is an amateur league, so when we see cool mechanics like that, it's always impressive as, uh, yep, yeah, uh, Q being, uh, Ruby throwing an E down, and, uh, usually when Lissandra's throw its E's, it means that something is gonna happen, but, uh, uses it for poke, quite, quite smart, makes the Silas run away and be scanned, but, um, yeah, you know, despite uh, a lot of uh, plays being made, there's only been one kill on the board, but you can see in mid lane, Rebreathe is going to get jumped on, but creatively uses the E, but, you know, the uh, Frozen Tomb will go down, but you can imagine this is going to be a deadless. Sandra as Barack Ogama, with the help of his team, just like last game, three man onto mid, and that's going to be a kill for the Sinus. Yeah, this time both sides playing it out perfectly, but just uh, that... The the punch is just uh, going in order, and three three people coming in for for uh, Greasy Goblins. Uh, Rebreed does everything he can, but uh, overall well played by Greasy Goblins, surprising the midliner from Gucci and scoring the second kill of the game. And both of them are being have been involved by this blitzcrank. So, God of Hacks, is doing exactly what you said, uh, baiting us into thinking that uh, he he does not feel oh and the flash for flash again. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, two kills now for Greasy Goblins. Once again, they have a good early game. Keep your eyes on Revealer. He does not sidestep the hook. Jungle Buddha has arrived. It's Pernini and Co. making a conquest onto Flay today as he's brought to lower HP. He's going to get himself a hook away. Kanza uses the ghost. So Greasy Goblins are favored in this exchange once again. And it seems like a similar story. The early game for Greasy Goblins is going very, very well for them. But God of Hacks on the Blitzcrank, I don't think he has missed a single hook after missing the first one in the level 1, so... Yeah, very well played on him and Gucci here, uh, putting some pressure on Barak Ogama, just gonna be a little bit HP traded. Yeah, some pressure indeed, but crucially the Lissandra W was not in range. Um, so, yeah, no further uh, push there from the mid jungle of Gucci Yang. So, uh, I think interestingly enough, we've seen Cyberskirt kind of run down to the river here, and Ruzu will try to collapse on him. I assume he will just walk away. But with the information of Revealer in the top side, you can imagine Panini will pay attention to the dragon. And uh, yeah, no contest with priorities in mid lane and bot lane. So this will be in the hands of Greasy Gardens.
This time Panini playing the Zelda game much more calmer, uh, making some actions happen, but overall focusing on the farm, um, not falling behind in the in the farm farm uh, numbers uh, from the below so far. And uh, again, Greasy Goblins beautifully played early game and. They even gonna, yeah, they are going to scare Revillo uh, off of the Herald, so no trade coming in from Gucci. Another good play by Greasy Goblins. Yeah, they instantly move off of the Dragon onto the Herald, and they get the support of God of Hacks there, which means numbers advantage for them. Revillo has to back off that Herald. And right now, what we can see, the early lanes once again going in favor of Greasy Goblins. And this has come from the Renekton into the Cassante. That is paying big dividends for them. I think Renekton uh, lost a few waves off of this uh, team play here. Um, uh, but more importantly, last game, I think, when we saw the isolation of Kanza into God of Snacks, Kanza was up in farm. He was winning that out. This time around, they are dead even. So Greasy Goblins won't have to worry about an accelerated AD carry. Uh, and uh, yeah, they have played this early game very well. And uh, now it's back to what we said. It's just making sure that this stays the constant for the rest of the game. Greasy Goblins, they, they can't, I, I will use the word, they did throw their lead in the last game and they need to make sure that they don't do that again. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so far, so good. And uh, using using the pressure caused by all these Blitz and Hulk seating and uh, and these early, early, early plays uh, going their way, and yeah, double objective uh, here as well. So, uh, as you said, uh, they do need to keep the pressure up. They do need to to, to keep the pedal, uh, pedal to the metal, right? Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. And God of Hacks here, uh, they're looking for something in the mid lane. It might be a dynamic three v three coming here. Might be indeed. There's great vision onto Ravilo. So Panini will charge the Q that is going onto the Ivan. He's going to drop the Daisy. Ribri does not take the E, so won't give some support to his jungler. And just like that, without the sweeper, doesn't know that there's a ward there. Play today. Tries to get a hook over to the turret, but it's not going to be enough. As Ribri gets a fantastic frozen tomb onto Panini. So we'll trade one back. But the kills, kill score goes in favor of the Greasy Goblins. And they once again are far ahead in the early game. Yeah, if they get a jump onto this uh, this Ivern, uh, we see here uh, Revilo, he does not know that he's on a vision, and Panini just says, let's just kill this guy, he's trolling. And instantly followed up, and uh, Rebreed, I, I believe it, he does the right thing by not taking this E. Meanwhile, Flay today uh, going going to for the cannon gets baited in, but uh, the cook only gets uh, cancelled by Nautilus's Q. The knockup, uh, the E from Blitzcam coming, uh, not, not, is not cancelled. So, yeah, very well played there again from Greasy Goblins. Another strong, strong early game. Yeah, big strong early game, and crucially this time around, Panini has actually farmed it decently. Ravilo having to flash away from God of Hacks, and this is what we said about Blitzcrank in the SLE. Yes, on paper, at higher levels, you look at champion for champion, this Blitzcrank doesn't make any sense, but this is the SLE. A lot of players make individual mistakes over positioning on the map, and a champion like Blitzcrank is perfect to punish those mistakes. I mean, Blitzcrank always makes sense if you hit every hook, right? Uh, so, yeah, this champion just... Uh, it's often... I think LS once said that he's the draft, draft saver for any draft, and uh, yeah, so far, DC Goblin just playing behind this Blitzcrank and uh, God of Hacks putting on a show. Oh. Oh. Yeah, almost landing a cheeky hook onto Kanza there. And yeah, putting on a show indeed. And I think one thing to look out for now is... Uh, I did say you isolate the star players of Gucci Yang and they will slowly pull ahead as at Barack Ogama not making sure that happens this time around. Oh. The chains don't land on Teruzu, but the Everfrost does. Use it. We'll use the W to get away. Cyberskirk does have the Flash W available, but isn't oh. going to use it. There's actually a fight in the bot lane as the depth charge goes onto God of Hacks. The hook lands onto Kanza, so there's going to be a follow up from God of Snacks. God of Hacks and God of Snacks not collaborating well enough. The Frozen Tomb goes onto the Kaiser. No cleanse once again, but there's not going to be much follow up over the wall as the punish comes through. Once again, Greasy Goblin's going a little bit too aggressive, and Gucci Yang are there to punish. Yeah, both of them going for different oh places. This play is not over. God of Hacks lands another hack worthy hook onto Flay today. That is the second time this 
game that the Blitzcrank has flashed on to play today. Looks for a hook, hooks him onto the Tara, and God of Hacks putting in a performance this game. Yeah, it looked so good for Gucci, but Gado hacks again, salvaging the play and getting something for his team as well. Uh, the play that uh, Greasy Guppens went for in the top side did not work out as Ruzu beautifully escaped, even without using Flash. Meanwhile, on the bot side, Gucci made the play happen, and uh, yeah, at, 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 at first it looked like it's going to be a, a strong play from them. Gado hacks the equalizer. God of Hacks the Equalizer indeed, and we have to say, there was some flat thrown towards this Blitzcrank pick, but God of Hacks, making sure that his name stays true, he is landing very, very big hooks in this game, and uh, I think, play today, um, <laughs> weirdly enough, I think a lot of them has been onto him, so, play today, a player, and actually, you know, yes, champion for champion, not great, but... Up against a player like Flay, you kinda know he's gonna play aggressive, you kinda know, he's gonna look to play make, right? And a champion like Blitzcrank, you literally prevent that from happening. You literally say, you can't step up because I will just hook you under my turret. Uh, and I think, yeah, play today so far, 0 and 3. Had a fantastic game last time around, but this time looking like his particular identity and play style is getting particularly punished by the Blitzcrank. Yeah, and a good eye in the Twitch chat. Uh, someone, uh, I think, uh, noticed the fact that uh, due to Panini dying that play, I think he failed to channel the Rift Herald. So no Rift Herald used by, oh. by the side of Greasy Goblins. So uh, that's a little bit of a win for Gucci there as well. So uh, yeah, overall, overall, uh, still quite a, quite an even fight there. Still Greasy Goblins with the three two point five k gold lead up, up, up around that. Something something around that. So. Yeah, but could have been better. Now we see maybe possibly another fight around the referral. Yeah, they could be, but it looks like with the mid wave being pushed and and Renekton on the bot lane, Gucci Yang will get access to start this Herald first. Now keep your eyes on Baraka Gama and what ultimate he steals. He is currently sitting on 3 and 0. He is the Fed member of the Greasy Goblins, and it just seems like looking at the positioning of Panini, this will just be given over. It's given over also, indeed. The, also, the the one v nine machine carrier reincarnated is in bot lane. So, um... <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, see, some heavy, heavy training, man. I think this champion is so dumb. Like Cassante is so strong and so overpowered. Well, you, you don't, I you don't hate think this a, champion. You don't think a tank that has an assassin mode is bad? It's weird. It's so ridiculous. Like at, at first, when you when you say when you say like, uh, oh, it's a tank with a lot of mobility, right? It's like okay, uh, who cares? The tank doesn't need mobility anyway, so uh, he's just tanking, right? But <laughs> he just like starts to dashing around, deals so much damage, and whenever I play against the champion, I I rage so much. Oh, and I'm gonna have to stop you there. Cyberskirk is trying to take away the enemy red buff, but was seen on a ward, so Rebri is gonna take the E. Kanza jumps over the wall. This is gonna be the push coming in from Gucci Yang. The flash gets expended by Cyberskirk, but the follow-up is too good. Kanza gets the first kill of the fight. God of Hacks, you oh, have had a fantastic game, but without the flash, you are next on the menu, and that's gonna be a double kill for Kanza. He has been offline for the most of this game, but just like last game, you leave him to farm in the side lane. He will become a menace in these fights, as that's gonna be the tier two turret taken down. Once again, it's Greasy Goblins with the lead, but playing too aggressive in the enemy jungle and they could potentially lose an inhib inhibitor turret here won't do for now but yes good chi yang they find their angle and they punish you you cannot make a mistake against this team Gucci again, just uh, early game, looking a little bit rough for them but they once it hits that 15 minute mark they just put it in the next gear and uh, just like that two turrets mid lane going down two and uh, two more kills for gucci and uh, the gold lead is just 1000 here and uh, beautifully played there i don't even know how did they sniff out the renekton being on red buff but, yeah so uh, well played by them so so renekton was on red buff and uh he was on top of a control ward he started hitting that control oh. ward and uh, more importantly he was seen by the entire Gucci squad, so they just hit <laughs> the uh, they hit the pings. I heard, I heard the pings. They were like bing, 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 and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was where Renekton kind of had to leave. Like oh, actually, rebreathe gonna be under some pressure from the Renekton. We'll take the quick oh. E and uh, Flash W doesn't work like that, but is going to sidestep very fancily 
uh, away from the Herkes. Barako Gama is actually going to walk up and play oh, today in Kanza. Play very disrespectfully. That's a three kill silence. You can't just walk up to him like that. And that's going to be a double kill for God of Snacks. And we talk about over aggression. It comes from the bot lane of Gucci. Oh. They are so experienced, but they fall to here. The prediction coming out from God of Hacks. That's the Blitz Crank equalizer. As Cyber's going to get a kill. This is the early game. This is the mistakes coming out from Gucci Yang instead of the Greasy Goblins. This time, and they are going to punish the experienced members of Gucci Yang as God of Hacks will try to make a play onto Ravila. Ravila sidestepping beautifully as he might actually get himself a kill. God of Hacks will go down, but crucially, a kill for them, which means look at this dragon. This is a big dragon for them to access to. It's going to be soul point because I cannot imagine much context will come out from here. Gucci just a little bit cruising around, uh, loses the focus there, and Greasy goblins, they 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 just woke up. They they they, they said no more of this passive and uh, passive mid game, mid to late game that we saw of them last game. And uh, just like that, uh, they decide to just go for it. Uh, punishes Gucci in mid lane, punishes Gucci in the jungle. Multiple kills going for them, and they are right now on the soul point. They are in so much better position than they were in the last game. And uh, Gucci uh, will not, uh, not 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 wake up after that play. Uh, they, they're in a little bit of trouble because Barak Ogama is having himself a hell of a game. So good, and I have to be so critical towards the bot lane of Gucci Yang. The experience between these two players, you cannot be walking up to a three kill Silas when he's walking into lane like that, assuming he is alone. Because God of Snacks was right there, the CC landed, he jumped into the fight, and I think. I was about to say, but someone crucially pointed out in Twitch chat, after that play where Kanzo picked up three kills, that the game was, in my opinion, the game was over. The game was yes. pretty much done Four for the Gucci Goblins. members, and of yes. course they are going for the Baron, and this, this Baron buff is gonna go down quite quickly. Teleport being expanded, and Gucci are trying to stop this play. It's already at half ready at half HP, but it's going to be the solo laners jumping onto God of Hacks. He's actually going to go down straight away, but it's a four versus five, and look how strong Barack Ogama is. The Baron gets finished off. Kanza has a right to the fight, okay. and he's doing big, big damage. The Nautilus Ultimate comes to God of Snacks. Kanza is going to jump forward with the support of his team, and that's actually going to be the team fight win going in favor of Gucci Yang's Gracie Goblins. They do secure themselves the Baron, but the overstep, and once again, the game swings back and forth. Uh, Greasy Goblins, they do secure themselves the Baron. They do get themselves kills onto the board, but the overall team fight went into the favor of Gucci Yang. We see here, again, I think Greasy Goblins with a very, very good call. The, absolutely the right call here to go for the Baron, but once they get this jump onto the Lissandra, I believe was the champion that they jumped on, yeah, they, they think that they can win this team fight and they can't start to commit, but Kanse is so strong, jumping over the wall, hitting a beautiful multi-man laser and cleaning up the fight right after. Beautiful punish there by Gucci. Maybe a little bit of a bait, uh, great bait by the breather. And uh, yeah, the Baron still critically goes down for one member as Jungle but still has the Baron buff. But what can they do with it? Gucci gets equalizes the gold essentially out of that play. Yeah, he still has the Baron buff. So we'll see how you utilize that one man Baron. But crucially, uh, they won't have those Baron buff minions in the side lanes. And uh, you see Barack Ogama, he's the strong one on Greasy Goblins. But yeah, as you said, Rebreathe kind of almost like a bait. And it was similar to the first game. Rebreathe, not the main damage dealer, not the carry. And they expended basically all their tools onto the Lissandra. The Lissandra survived for as long as she could. But again, she's the supporting cast member in this composition. The follow-up was from the carries, the main characters in Kanza and Co. And uh, they arrived onto the scene and was able to clean house. But I think, crucially, God of Hacks was fishing for a hook. And whilst fishing, he found a Lissandra and a Cassante in his face and was, you know, instantly taken out. And uh, I think this is where the criticisms of the Blitzcrank comes through, is that in these uh, 5 of 5 duels, yes, when it comes to picks, he is fantastic. And God of Hacks, if you can play the Blitzcrank the way that you are, that is where the Blitzcrank shines the most. But in these 5v5 fights, Blitzcrank finds it really difficult to play it out. Let's say you throw a hook into a team fight, you press E on someone. After that, you're kind of just walking around, literally like a bot. Um, no pun intended. Get it? Do you get it? Because he's a bot. <laughs> a robot. Anyway, 
But yeah, you kind of just walk around and you're like, well, I guess I'll wait eight, six, seven seconds for my next hook. And uh, yeah, for these fights. And speaking of, for the fights, he's going to get caught out in his own jungle. The hook goes on to Ravilo, but that's literally just to bring him closer. And once again, an individual mistake. And yes, you get the Baron buff, but there's no push because the Baron buff is on your jungler. Panini trying to queue forward, oh, but he gets interrupted by Rozo. The Q3 blocks the buy engage, and Gucci Yang will push forward. The Daisy is going to land a knock-up onto the Renekton, and he's going to be the next to fall. Good God of Snacks, Barocco Gurma, you are staring into the face of a push from Gucci Yang, and it's going to be towards your inhibitor. The what? pain the drain oh, from Gucci not. does not stop. They they can go for this inhibitor, but they decide to go to secure the uh, the, the the dragon. So the soul soul is not secured somehow by the side of greasy goblins. And we see uh, maybe a player replay for Baron. We do not see it, and Gucci is going to go for the dragon here. Yeah, again we saw we, the, the task is so difficult for God of God of Hacks here. He, he basically he needs to hook Zeri. Zeri with flash up, Zeri with ghost up, Zeri with dashes, Zeri with mobility, Zeri with uh, uh, shields coming in from uh, or from the from the the what's the name Ivern, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> such a such a style task, and he's just uh, walking around the, the jungle alone, fishing for some hooks, some opportunities, some vision. Gets punished for it. After that, Panini decides to join his friend in demise and uh, dies as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no no stopping after that. Yeah, no stopping indeed, and such a back and forth game, you can see how close these two teams are with each other in terms of skill level, but yeah, as you said, God of Hacks, and it's really sad to see because he's played such a fantastic game, a lot of the kills that Greasy Goblins have in their pockets are off the back of these hooks, but unfortunately, you hit the nail on the noggin. Blitzcrank has to hook Kaiser. If Kaiser isn't the one being hooked... Yeah, Zeri. It's yeah. a bit unfortunate. Oh, sorry, Zeri. Zeri is the target that God of Hacks has. And when Blitzcrank, you kind of want more than one target. Unfortunately, he has only one. If you hook anyone else, it's kind of pointless. It doesn't really achieve much unless, you know, they are isolated or it's a three versus two, or you get follow-up from the team. But in most cases, you know, there's not going to be much there. And taking a look at the way, I mean, that, that I think for sure I have to... Definitely will throw some criticism towards him. He was kind of just in the jungle by himself, but not went <laughs> around. Uh, and, you know, Rebrief just was like, what the hell is that guy doing? And just went on him instantly. And, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah it's, it's really difficult for God Packs to play this. And it's a similar story. And, you know, potentially a you know question mark thrown to the uh, goblins here. It's like, first game, you oh. give... Uh, oh, actually, God of Hacks once again under some pressure. But, yeah. In the first game, you give God of Snacks a tough game, and then this time around, you give God of Hacks an even tougher one as uh, Barack Gama actually uses a, a stolen Lissandra ultimate to try and look for a play on to rebreathe. What this means... Oh, the, the, oh no. Oh, and he gets out with the Soas DP, and actually they have a lot of pressure coming out of this play. Barack Gama is giving his team kind of an opportunity in this mid game. That was an insane escape as the teleport away from the pressure means he teleports into the mid lane. And this could be an inhibitor tower. But, Greasy Gums, you have to watch out because there is now a collapse onto your entire team. Here comes Reaping with a teleport. Coming to the one to three members. The Kaiser is left to run away. Kanza is going to fall down first. So this could be a winnable fight. But the team composition is just too strong from Gucci Yang. As it's not going to be enough. The kills come through. Ruzu, Reaper, Rob. Velo, fight today, carries through the team fight, even without Kanza, and that's going to be the team fight win. What a dynamic, explosive team fight right there. We see they just they, they go for this midline play, uh, they go for this midline and they just pull the trigger. But uh, we see the beautiful, beautiful bait coming in from Rebreed again. Lots of ultimates on to Kanza. They actually get the Zeri, they kill the Zeri, but once she's dead, they just have nothing left, and the shields and the team comp, as, as, as ex exactly how you said, the key team comp diff coming in from Gucci. No fighting after that, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be five five Baron buffs for Gucci here uh, as, as Zeri responds in the base as well. Yeah, and, and 
I have to say, we have been saying throughout this series, Rebreed is the setup for this good Chi Yang team. But this fight, and in particular this fight, he was the carry. He was the main character. He stepped into that spotlight for a short while because he landed a massive W to start that team fight. Kanza fell down instantly off the back of a Vi Ultimate from Panini. And it was on to Rebreed, the solo AP threat coming from this good Chi Yang team. And he played that team fight extremely well. Well, three and three now. He uh, made sure that he didn't have a, you know, negative KD. So great for him, <laughs> but more importantly, great for the Gucci Yang team as they now have secured five Baron Boss for themselves. And uh, yeah, this dragon will be really important. And as you can see, Greasy Goblins, they're prioritizing so, they're prioritizing this dragon so much that they've uh, come onto the objective 40 seconds before it spawned. Um, so yeah, just goes to show how important this dragon is. I have to say, I have to say that uh, Greasy Goblins here. I believe taking the right approach, they have to be in the right place first. They have to get a pick onto the onto the Kanze or at worst case onto the Velo. If they can get some pick onto the Squishy and member of Gucci and Barako Gama is going for a play. Yeah, Barako Gama goes in, but he's done an incredible play with the Lissandra ultimate. The catch goes onto Kanza. He is trying to survive as much as he can. Oh, yeah, Look at the defensive utility coming up from the Ivan as it's going to keep his AD carry alive. And there he goes. Kanza's going to run forward, picks himself up a triple kill. And good Chi Yang, you can imagine this is the series win. They will push through the mid lane base. And that's 2 0 on the board against the Greasy. Goblins. Yeah, with the Baron buff, I don't believe there's any stopping five. It's a, actually almost a clean ace. The only play today dies there. Critically, they, they go for a desperation play, and it looks like it might work out for a second, but Kanze somehow survives this team fight and with the shields, with the mobility, with the dashes, <laughs> lives throughout it, scores a triple kill, and Gucci will take down Risi Goblins 2 0. 2-0, not all heroes wear capes, as it was Ravilo keeping the main man from Gucci Yang alive, making sure that, you know, on his screen, he was probably thinking, I'm dead here. You know, in your comments, you're saying, I'm dead. But Ravilo said, no, you are not. I'm keeping you alive, and Gucci Yang take the series. <laughs> Get down, Mr. President, indeed. Yeah, well played by Gucci quite well played by greasy goblins as well here it was actually a pretty close to zero i have to say great early games by them but uh, they do need to work on the transition now gucci six and two one of the two uh, gucci yang uh, six and two one of the top teams in sle meanwhile greasy goblins coming out of this week with four and four the mid-tier team uh, and yeah. mid-table team uh, they do have to uh, work on their consistency, surely. If they can go 2-0 one week, they have to get themselves together at the, the, to, to hold the focus for two weeks in a row, uh, not to go 0-2 in the next week. And uh, But yeah, uh, lots lots of positives to take out of both, take for both teams, and actually a little bit of negatives as well for both teams. Yeah, pluses and minuses for both teams, and I'm not going to compliment Gucci too much because uh, I need to make sure that I am a strict Asian parent when it comes to... Uh, running this team um and uh yeah i think i mean personally for me firstly who who, who would you give your mvp to for, for the whole series um it's quite difficult to say i believe uh, it was a great series uh for uh Revilo, especially in this mid to late game uh, as he was kind of um securing these team fights uh team fight defined wins and uh so I would I would be split between Revillo. I do think that Rebreed played a very very mature role uh, with with how he was playing, uh, knowing that he's a rookie, knowing that he's a, is a player that uh, would like to kind of like shine. He has uh, he has uh, found himself such a such a unique role playing a very supportive type of gameplay uh, with picks like Nautilus here with on the Lissandra, just bringing so much uh, so much space for his uh, the rest of his team. So I have to acknowledge him, but uh, overall my MVP goes to Revilla. Yeah, and I think honestly, I have to agree with you because Rebreath was really important for the success of this team, but I'm actually going to give my MVP to Revilla and uh, yeah, Savage, maybe you can break down what a game he had uh, up against Panini. Yeah, uh, we saw the, the matchup of the series going in the, in the jungle. Uh, Panini versus Revillo again. Uh, they have faced each other many, many times by now in the SLE, in house queue, in the Gucci Tower, in now in the SLE. And uh, another chapter for both of them. 
this time Revillo takes uh, takes the W. But uh, yeah, <laughs> exciting to see. Maybe they will match up in uh, in game uh, in the playoffs. Uh, no more of uh, no meeting the same team in the SLA regular season. So the greasy government versus Gucci Yang no more. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, good job, good job for the Gucci team. Good job for Revillo, especially the MVP from us from the casters and. Uh, I think, but it, it's not over yet. Uh, it's uh, she takes the first series of the night, but we have another series coming up. It's going to be Vitagen playing against. Uh... I need to check the other team. Black Lotus Esports, the exciting solo in Black Lotus. I think uh, they had the Akali Master in midline. Uh, I'm gonna quickly check, uh, confirm uh, my uh, the thing I think it is, and yeah, uh, what do you think about this matchup, Adrian? Adrian is still uh, oh, oh, away. Oh, what? My mic was muted. Sorry, my mic was muted. My mic. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for this matchup, and uh, I think honestly eyes on the mid lane because it's a stylistic matchup and we will break this down more in the pregame of, of itogen versus black lotus so those who are here congratulations to good yang um uh, don't go anywhere because we've got another game coming up so uh we will be there and we will talk about it very very soon <laughs> 